Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Okay, fantastic. I am the sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's continue with the oxygen not included mid-game. Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, if anyone knows, I would love to know... Ooh. Hello, Neutronium. Uh, can we get a peek at what's over here? I don't mind letting hydrogen into the base uh, uncontrolled. Chlorine is a bit of a different matter. Let's go... Let's go through here. Why not? And we can actually just do some stairs down this way. Uh, wow, my mental power is already such that I am questioning whether I said hello, Ben Wu. Um, hello, Ben Wu. No COVID brain here. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's it's not early onset senility. It's okay. Alright, so let's dig over this way. Honestly, I think you did, but I'm not certain either. <laughs> okay. Oh, what the... Oh, wow. I left that empty a bit longer than I should have. Uh, let's put this here. Before the salt slush finds its way back up. BG Nymond, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm excited to see what this uh, geyser is. I was just going to say earlier, um, if anyone knows, like, what geysers you are guaranteed to get on the starter asteroid, I would be very interested to know that. Um, let's dig up this way. And see what we've got over here. Oh yeah, that, that's right. Uh, when we ended off last time, we were actually thinking about solar panels. Um, which is kind of exciting. So from what I've seen, there isn't any difference between... The space scanners, um, whether they're way up here or down here, presumably they work a lot better if they're completely exposed vertically uh, to space. Um, but for now, I think I'll probably just count on this one. I don't know, I might leave this here a little bit longer so we can compare the two and see if there's ever a difference. Oh? Okay. It looks like uh, this one picked up that there's asteroids incoming significantly more quickly. Even though if we mouse over it, it both just they both just say scan quality 0%. Um, I have seen... I don't know if it's just the way it's animated that it always points this way. It gives the impression that they are literally physically scanning for something, left and right, in which case the one up here might have an advantage. Or, no, I guess the one down here would have more of an advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, regardless, uh, this one does seem to work a little bit better, which is what we might expect intuitively. 
Oh, we've already dug over here. Cool. Let's uh, open this one up. But not to the extent that it'll actually erupt. And what is this hydrogen doing? Is it not able to escape through this carbon dioxide? I would have thought the CO2 is... Oh, that's vacuum. Wait, what? Hydrogen, vacuum, polluted oxygen. Oh, it's because there's water here. This is a water airlock. That's so weird. Wait, this tile shouldn't be... Oh, I think I see. Okay, so gas, gas, fluid, empty space, fluid. The gas can't get past the water. And... Therefore... I don't know how we ended up with vacuum in this tile. Maybe water dropping down? Uh, but... It's a perfect illustration. Napolinus, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's waterlocked. Indeed it is. How very strange. And we have, drumroll, a infectious polluted oxygen vent. Skill required operation. That's for analysis. I don't think we're going to go to the trouble of using this. I don't even know how we would... A highly pressurized vent that periodically erupts with warm, polluted oxygen at 60 degrees with slime lung. That sounds like way more trouble than it's worth to get the oxygen out of it. I don't know about you guys, but we have to... So presumably out of this, if we wanted to exploit this, we would want the oxygen. I guess you could think of the heat as something to gain once you're able to deal with it since it'll run steam turbines. But before you get to that point, at least, you have to deal with a lot of heat, slime lung, and you have to clean the polluted oxygen, which is going to cost a little bit of power and some sand. Uh, yeah, not my favorite geyser, to be honest. Uh, I think... I think we can do better. Most likely. Are there any other... Where's the materials overlay? Uh, mineral? What was the overlay that... I think it was temperature. Sometimes temperature shows us neutronium. Uh, very clearly. But I think... What was it? There was another overlay. I don't know that the materials overlay shows us. The neutronium. I think it's always grey. Yeah, that's not that helpful. Is there one where we can pick a specific resource? Uh, I don't think there is. Nope. Temperature is not perfect, but sometimes it shows us the neutronium. Uh, and sometimes it's somehow... I, I guess the, the neutronium is always going to be the temperature that it's spawned at, right? Because the thermal conductivity is literally zero. And this is at 
uh, basically absolute zero. I don't know why the neutronium sometimes spawns hotter. But that's how it is. Well, we'll explore the whole thing eventually. So let's get to planning our our bunker tiles, our solar panels, and so on. First of all, we're going to need a lot more steel. Um, we've got 29 tons of iron, so that's kind of promising. Let's make... Let's see, 10 of these is one ton, right? So I think we'll go for like five tons. Uh, 70 iron makes 100 steel and just ballpark, just to get the scale of it. Um, I think we're going to want, like, even just to get started. Wait, why can't I plant a bunker tile? What? What? Oh, I have to select the only material it can be made out of? Um, and then we're looking at a solar panel or two. That's just, that's just glass. That's weird. Uh, well, glass is basically infinite, so we're really just looking at the cost in steel. Uh, so, let's see. About... How much does the bunker door cost? I think it's 500. So that's 2,000. Uh, let's call it like 4,000 steel that we'll want to make a good start. And we're making how much iron? Uh, 50 times 100. More than enough. And then... 40 of these. Um, I'm fairly confident that we can deal with the heat coming out of that, but maybe continuous use will be a bit of a problem. I could put a sensor on this. I might do that. I was, I was going to say we're probably fine pumping uh, pumping heat into the cooling loop, uh, with somewhat continuous, temporarily continuous usage of the metal refinery, but looking at just how hot it comes out, uh, it's gonna cook the entire base, at least for a little while, before things cool down. So what I might do, Buvin, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, we'll measure the temperature of the water coming out, of, of the brine rather, coming out of the metal refinery. And we'll just say that that has to be below a certain temperature before we operate this. Why... Oh, no way. Ninety-five degrees? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, disable building. That was faster than expected. I thought... I thought, okay, this could end up kind of cooking the base. Okay. Uh... Maybe something will start to break if we do this too fast. Um, it didn't occur to me that the... That the brine would flash to steam. Let's see. 
uh, I believe it's 102 degrees. Yeah, 102.8 degrees. And this we caught this one at 95. So it's not implausible that it got that hot. Although I would have expected to see the hot stuff looping through the base. Not over here. I'm not entirely sure why this was so hot. Maybe it's just still cooling down after using the glass forge. Um, but in any case... Hmm. Maybe... We could check the temperature at both ends and make sure they're both low enough. before we do anything that generates a lot of heat. I think the kiln is probably safe, but we could connect that up as well if we want to. But why do we have water as well as brine over here? That I don't understand. Did we end up with salt? We ended up with salt, okay. So some of it did get flashed to steam. I think the real mystery is how we ended up with brine uh, outside of the pipes here. No power? Oh. Oh, right. That would probably help. Yeah, that's looking kind of warm. 43 degree brine. Some of it is going to dissipate throughout the base, making it hotter. Uh, in any case, it's going to come back to here at a certain temperature. And if that temperature is above 25 degrees, we're going to drop it by 14. I did expect something like this, just not so quickly, if we do a bunch of uh, metal refinery usage all at once. Alright, so if we are above, I don't know, 25 degrees, green signal, that should be okay. But I'll make sure we've cleaned everything up before we continue with that. I also want to make sure the uh, pipes over here are just as cool. So we'll probably need a not gate. Or we could use an and gate. Uh, I guess we're sort of making a NAND gate because we're going to invert uh, the settings on this temperature threshold to say below 25 or below 26 we could do and then we're going to say not what is that water did something break uh yes and no the coolant the brine actually got hot enough to flash to steam and in oxygen not included it just somehow gets out of the pipes if that happens uh, so it flashed to steam, some of it separated into water and salt, and uh, somehow we got brine that didn't separate into water and salt, even though it found its way out of the pipes as well. Um, but I believe all of this liquid here is because uh, the coolant got too hot. RPHL streams, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so I would like that sense of build, please. And we'll rearrange our grid a little bit. Um, instead of measuring the temperature up here, which is actually just like the ambient temperature 
instead of the pipes. I think the pipes will respond a lot quicker. Being radiant. Sounds like a proper Oni experience, right? Or I could just leave that sensor there as one more safety net. What do you think is going to react quicker, the ambient temperature or the pipes? I think the radiant pipes that are directly behind the glass forge are going to react quicker. I mean, that's why the stuff got flashed to steam back here. Okay. So, not gate. Um... And I'll just put this over here. It's going to be a little bit of a spaghetti mess with the wiring, no matter what we do. But that's okay. So if either of them are green, we're going to output red. And I'll just keep this out of the way of any other automation wires that we might end up using. I'm sure that'll get fixed by itself, but let's do that. Alright, so if we are below 25 degrees, if we are not that... Wait, wait, wait. If we are not above 25 degrees on either of these pipes, we can do the hot things. In fact, why don't I just make that the rule for all of these? They all produce a lot of heat. Yeah, they all produce tons of heat, so why not? Uh, in that case, we can just run it through like this. Maybe I'll end up changing the rule. That's fine. It'll be easy enough. And then... Probably just get rid of this one. Okay. Uh, Christoph Clades, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Not bad, nice. List of plates. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Was that the one with the dragons? Bulls Chansey, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um Alright. We're done there. Deconstruct the ladders. I wish there was a hotkey for deconstruct selected. It's the new Borderlands game. Oh, okay. Uh, let's sweep all of this. I was just telling chat I should start playing Oni again. Nice. Uh, how's our temperature now? Okay, in this room, at least, it's pretty much stabilized. Uh, what about the rest of the base? I think it's looking warmer than usual. It's definitely looking warmer than usual. The aqua tuna is, is running pretty much constantly now. Uh, so what's the temperature here? 25.8. Fair enough. Yep, 
it would be best if we could measure the temperature of the water literally one tile before it goes into the aqua tuna. Uh, I guess we could still do that technically, but someone's gonna get scalded badly. I think. Actually, 65 degrees, I'm not sure. Uh, it would at least be uncomfortable, and I'm sure, like, one extra tile of delay, um, is probably gonna be fine. Bristle blossoms are so finicky. Uh, bristle blossoms are nice when we get to the point where, whoops, we ran out of all the dirt. Wait, what? Oh, that's 61 kilos, not 61 tons. Yeah, um, I had vast amounts of mealwood for a long time, and then we, one day we, we ran out of dirt. So, at the stage we're up to with our infinite water and electrolysis and stuff, uh, browsing through the needs of the different plants, bristleberry is basically just water and electricity. As long as you're not trying to get it super close to its freezing point, the temp doesn't need to be right next to the input of the aqua tuna. Yeah, it's just that, um, like, we want the packet that we're reading uh, to be representative of the packet that's going into the aqua tuna. That's all. But it should be anyway. I don't really foresee some giant spikes from one tile to the next in temperature in the liquid pipes, right? I think they all somewhat equalize with their neighbors. Uh, wow, that's actually looking really cold over here. 14.9 degrees. Nice, nice. So we should now be able to queue up iron and steel with reckless abandon, I hope. We're gonna find out. I think we could afford to have this filled up a bit more. Let's make it between a third and two thirds. Uh, Raw, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Although I kind of forgot while it's filling, uh, filling up, half of the loop isn't going to move as fast as it normally would. Um, I don't know how much of a problem that is. So molten glass overheated water pipes? Uh, it wasn't exactly the molten glass. Um, we weren't even running the glass forge when it happened. So we'd run, we ran the glass forge a little while ago. Oh, wait. Uh, we do have the glass forge enabled, actually. Although we had a temperature sensor up here, so that theoretically we don't run it when things get too hot. Um, but we weren't running the glass forge at the time. The uh, flashing to steam incident happened, weirdly enough, over here. This is our coolant loop. Uh, when we ran the metal refinery several times in a row, uh, this is where the temperature got too high. So I'm guessing what happened was, even though the coolant gets pumped in to the uh, metal refinery, and outputs this way. Um, I think also the fluid just running past it got heated up a significant amount so that by the time it got to this area, which the ambient temperature was still kind of high, um, it basically crossed the line and got to steam. Off topic though, did I mention I grabbed the rail loader slash unload mod you're using in Factorio? So thanks for that. It's a good mod, isn't it? The only downside of it is it doesn't behave very well if you uh, cut and paste or if you go select new contents for a blueprint that you're updating. You just have to create a blueprint from scratch whenever you 
whenever you have uh, east to west rail loaders or unloaders, because if you, if you cut and paste them, they end up going vertical. Metal refinery is a heating monster? Yeah. And I'm trying to set up a system where I can just queue up as much of this as I want, and we're not going to... We're not going to have things overheat. So the current temperature here is actually only 17 degrees. Why is this red? Above 25. Oh, right. That's going to a not gate. Um, and this should be the same. I think I have to set it to below, actually. No, no. It was because I hadn't set this one. Yeah, so both of these are set to above 25 degrees, and then we say not that, which is just another way of doing an AND gate, actually, but it's a bit smaller. Um, so if both ends of the coolant pipe running through this room are sufficiently cool, we're allowed to do the things that produce heat. I usually just throw my metal refineries in st inside a steam room with Atmos suit required. I see. I hadn't thought of that. I think I would like to pay the toll to get some temp shift plates over this way. Thermally reactive obsidian. The temp shift plates don't actually overheat, right? I think I would like a thermally reactive material for this. And I don't think I'm using obsidian for anything else. As long as it's not going to, like, melt or something. Well, we're not going to turn obsidian into coal, so this is probably fine. It's not... Is it going to be black? That would tend to look kind of cool, I would imagine. You're joking. I can't... I can't do an upgrade plan for this. I have to remove the drywall piece by piece. Oh, no. Um, well, let's try... putting in a few tiles... of temp shift plate... as obsidian, and we'll see what happens. Usually don't use drywall when not in space. Yeah, I wanted to see if if drywall would help uh, help the temperature spread a bit. Basically, be like a cheaper temp shift plate. But judging by the temperature of this pipe up here, compared to the background wall, I would say that's a no. It is an insulated pipe, though. To be fair. Okay, so now we're going to make this out of obsidian. And see how that looks. Both aesthetically and in terms of the way he uh, heat spreads. It doesn't help it move. It just buffers the heat. Okay, so we definitely want temp shift plates here. Yeah, it's still white, even though we made it out of obsidian. Okay, so in that case... One, two, three, four... Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can't reach this. Um, get some stupid ladders in here. And I would like to remove... Can I can I do a deconstruct planner for just the back walls? Background buildings? I th think that's it. Drywall is marked for deconstruction, and it looks like nothing else is. Okay, deconstruct, background buildings... Everything around 
the glass, except for these ones. What are the thermal properties of these obsidian plates? They are thermally reactive. Um, in other words, they spread heat more quickly. And their overheat temperature is increased. Requires little energy to raise in temperature, therefore he... No, wait, wait. I think I remember that being from yesterday, not quite what I thought it was. Thermally reactive, high thermal conductivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we actually want... Lead? Lol. Lead walls, that seems safe. There was a material that was abundant that does high thermal conductivity and thermally reactive. And I don't think temp shift plates can overheat. Um, where was it? Ceramic? Ceramic is an insulator, you fool. High thermal conductivity. We're not making it out of steel. Plastic, lol. Uh, I don't want to make it out of a metal. I want to make it out of something abundant. Maybe it's fine if it's, uh, if it doesn't have a high... Uh, heat capacity. Diamond? Okay, let me have a look. Iron, iron, sedimentary rock is thermally reactive. Uh, granite. Granite has decor. I don't think temp shift plates have decor, though. Nor do we care too much in this area, I think. Overheat temp. Didn't we have a material that was high thermal conductivity and thermally reactive? Um, no, not thermally reactive. The opposite. Highly conductive but high heat capacity is what I was thinking of. It's probably just something we can't build. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we found it here. It's probably... Or was it pipes? Uh, it's probably a material that we can't make temp shift plates out of. I don't think we've run out of whatever it was. Maybe it was a metal. That would make a lot of sense. Temp shift plates do not conduct heat to each other. Really? What's the point of them? Well, we'll run the experiment anyway. We'll try it with obsidian first. They conduct it to the air in front of them. Okay, I can live with that. As long as the glass forge itself uh, stops being so overheated. And does it help conduct it to the pipes as well? It probably doesn't need any help. It's already a radiant pipe. They can also conduct it to any tile or pipe. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I want the maximum conductivity, uh, assuming, of course, that it doesn't just instantly make this whole thing, the coolant loop, heat up too much in this area, just from one recipe, in which case I could stop this from being radiant. Or I could stop using the temp shift plates. We, we can tweak it. Uh, 
Uh, looks like we've been making some more iron. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we have. 36 degree. Oh, wow. Okay. Um... Maybe I should make it so that... Maybe I should make it so that our coolant... ...can go straight from the aqua tuna to the rest of the base down here, as well as go up here. It'll mean that this area cycles more slowly, but... ...it'll also mean that... Uh, running the factory area doesn't cook the base temporarily. Because we've basically got the thermal aqua tuna and then, like, everything that heats up our coolant loop. And then the rest of the base before the uh, thermal aqua tuna. Um... In the long run, that ordering isn't going to matter, but at least at first, um, we're definitely going to cook the base a little bit every time we do these things. Temp mechanics are fun to exploit? Yeah. Okay, so... Get that liquid pipe built. Why is this stopped? Yeah, that's about what I was expecting. Oh, because a bunch of... Because the metal refinery actually has a bunch of output. Okay. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Um... I actually underestimated... just how much liquid would be stored inside the metal refinery when it did some recipes and we're dangerously close to overflowing I think I should set it so that we don't add any more unless this somehow ends up being empty and then we really don't need much in this reservoir I could add something so that if it gets too full, uh, we dump it back into this system. That's probably a good idea. It's probably a very good idea, actually. Um, I just need to find somewhere to do the pipe spaghetti. I haven't left myself room. Uh... It's actually pretty tricky right now. We could put this pipe here and then still not be able to put a bridge past there. I just want to output... I guess we don't have to output from the reservoir, we can just output from the loop anywhere. Which means... I could do it here. Except, unlike logic gates, we can't put a liquid shutoff inside... Uh, inside some tiles. So... Maybe like this? And uh, like this? And... Like this? And like this? And we're just going to read the level of the liquid reservoir. Um, it may be the case that we can set this up just by changing the settings here. So that this never gets over full. Um, but I suspect... If we theoretically did enough recipes like this quickly enough... Uh, even despite those settings, this could fill up. And we wouldn't get movement in our loop. The refinery is set to take priority over the rest of it. It has a surprisingly huge storage for its size. 
the uh, fluid. Yeah. Yeah, it's gargantuan. There's no way to exploit that as storage space, I imagine. Not really. Um, okay, so we don't need two spaghetti pipes away from this. We just need to take it anywhere from the loop and put it back into the desalinator. Um, but we need the logic from... Uh, we need the reading from the liquid reservoir. So we're just going to connect this uh, automation wire. And we can change the setting. No, we can't actually change the setting on the liquid shutoff. So we'll need a not gate. To get the opposite of whatever this valve is doing. And fortunately the latch uh, stuff is built into the output from the container. I kind of wish Factor uh, Factorio would let you do this actually. Instead of just getting a static read from uh, an accumulator for example. It would give you this range. But I understand... I understand why they would want to make it so that you have to do the logic with the combinators, but being kind of a veteran of using the combinators, I just like ways that I can uh, reduce the combinator count. We could probably expand this a little bit. Get that gold. Uh, okay, this thing needs power, actually. And I'll just do it like this. So I don't have to make a... Whatchamacallit? Transformer. Can we get that done now? I really want to see if this is working. Okay, so... When this is outputting red signal... If it gets above 10%, we're going to drain this. Wait, is it going to end up stabilizing, or is it going to go back and forth between the two settings? So currently, if... Let's set this to like 10 and 20. Uh, if we go below 10%, we get a green signal, which means we put more in. If we get above 20%, we get a red signal. Uh, which means we stop putting it in and we start taking it out. So doesn't that mean it's going to go back and forth? Between 10 and 20? That's probably fine, but ideally I would like it to just sit idle with the input and output uh, once we get to the point of... Once we get between those values. I think I would also like it to drain more slowly, even though it is draining very slowly, because I don't like the gaps in the coolant. Hmm. That's a lot of heat. Would it be unwise to detect... Yeah, it would. To detect temperature at various locations and run the aqua tuner based on that. Um, if we get the coolant below... Zero. Um, it's going to be bad. Hmm. 
maybe a base-wide coolant loop isn't that good, but at the same time, setting up multiple steam rooms... Well, I guess we don't need multiple steam rooms to have multiple cooling loops. We could have uh, a number of aqua tuners in here, each cooling a different section of the base that has a different tendency to heat up quickly or not. You can automate vents too, indeed. Ooh, we're at 67 degrees in our water. I feel like this room actually needs some cooling. Except it's going to be a little bit awkward with the piping, but not too bad. In fact, we've already... No. Never mind. I think I don't like this, actually. I'm going to get rid of it. Um, but I will... What is this? Water. Liquid water. Oh, that's from when we were filling this up. I think we will run our coolant through here. sure the uh, steam engines never get that hot. Bridges. And we'll snip this when it's done. Then we'll keep the, the water main bus in place. Um, I might add bridges here so that we can get the water through if it comes to that. What if there be second reservoir to read signals from? Second reservoir? Oh, for the trying to keep this thing stable? So what's the temperature here? 25.5, 25.5, okay. So it's already working properly, uh, which is, oh, that's weird. That's kind of cool, actually. All right, let's remove this. And uh, this, and this, and these, but not the bridges. Actually, we don't need to remove that pipe. It's just going to be part of the water pipe. Alright. I think we are slowly losing water here. Coolant, rather. I mean, we're putting it back into the desalinator, so probably yes. I could put it back into the reservoir, but it would be a bit of a waste of the pump energy. Speaking of, I could make the pump a bit more efficient um, by detecting water or coolant. Just make sure it's immersed before it uh, starts doing anything. Maybe if I do that, then it would be better. I don't need this uh, connecting straight back into this pipe. I can just dump it straight back in here. That will be a little bit less efficient because we'll have to pump it back in. But with the efficiency, the power efficiency that we're going to gain by limiting this pump... 
uh, I think between the two of those we're going to net profit. And then we can correct, uh, correct the level of this storage a lot more quickly. Okay, so in that case... Well, we're going to have to move this, aren't we? So it's going to be rather tricky to fit. I'm going to have to move the knot gate. Why doesn't it let me put the knot gate behind there? Oh, I guess I know the answer. Because it's on top of a input. Deconstruct. Deconstruct. This will probably stay in the same spot. This will go up here. And I was going to say we'd just put a vent down here, but what if we're full? Um, no, I think the shutoff valve should go to this liquid vent, which means I could just put it up here. That might be easier. Unless I want to put a pair of bridges here. Either way is fine. I think this will be a bit cleaner. Uh, we don't need to worry about deconstructing that pipe. because it's got the same fluid in it that we want. So... This goes that way. And... This goes... that way. Right? Seems good. Uh, but we need a valve. That's why I was doing this. So we probably do not. Oops. I didn't need to deconstruct that. I could have just do done the snippy. Uh, liquid shutoff valve goes here. Not gate goes here. And there's probably something I could do with a buffer and or filter gate. Uh, I'm sure there's something I can do with more advanced logic. Uh, that'll get around this ping pong effect. So let's see. Buffer is... If we get the signal for just a moment, we continue it for a little while. Filter is we need to receive the signal for a little while before it works. Uh, X or exclusive or exactly one of its inputs is receiving green. That doesn't really help us here. Memory toggle. Contains an internal memory and will output whatever signal is stored in that memory. Oh, it's a memory cell. So it's got, like, on and off inputs, and it'll hold onto it, right? Oh, we're still using this. Uh, we can probably get rid of that, actually. Same goes for this metal refinery. Now that I think about it, we didn't need all of this pipe spaghetti here. And the kiln. So none of this bridging was necessary. Uh, why don't we just decon that? Maybe this bridging was necessary. Yeah, it was. And this can go here, I guess. And we can put the 
else here. Not like that. Okay, liquid shutoff needs power. Reclaim some of that. Don't need that piece of pipe. Fantastic. Oh, it's also going straight to the desalinator. That's probably fine. In fact, yeah, that's that's good. That means we'll skip uh, using the pump a lot of the time. All right, so current ambient pressure, hydro sensor. If below, no, we want above. And I presume we can get above 500 with salt water is going to be very, very similar to brine. Yeah. So once there's a decent amount of salt, of brine here, uh, the pump will activate. That's a looking a lot smoother. Hey Schlerpus, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's weird. I'm seeing cat jam, but not clap. Is this uh? Clap. Is this? I could have sworn I added clap. It's a mystery. Okay. So once this gets to between 10 and 20%, I'm expecting it to just sort of ping pong back and forth. I could just set both of these to 10%. Would that work? Red signal when reservoir is 10% full until it's less than 10%. Green signal when it's less than 10% until it's 10%. Yeah, so this is just like... No latch built in, kind of like an accumulator. Won't the pass? Uh, won't the time that it takes for the fluid to pass kind of act like a latch, though? Alien dance? What's that? I don't know if I've seen that one. All right. Uh, we are approaching 10%. I should probably slow it down. Three, two, one, and green. And green. So we stop this one and start this one. And then... We're below 10%. The fluid actually backed up here surprisingly quickly. I think that actually might work out. We're still below. Oh, we're not pumping in... Oh, no. Well, that's okay. The main thing is we have slack, and if we have a little bit in this reservoir, we know that the whole thing is going to be eventually not going to have gaps in it. So we're just waiting for enough slush before we bother using the pump. If you don't see clap, then it's got to be aliens. I see. And now it is... Oh, there's still some in there. I was going to say it's empty. Oh, we just did another another bit of steel or iron, it looks like. Yeah, we did. But the dupes al already took it away? That's surprising. OK. 
Okay. So it might... I don't know, I think we just have to wait for more fluid in to come back into the system. Before I make any solid judgments on it. Why is this slow? Oh! That's interesting. Wait. Oh wait, I have to... Oh, there's the problem. I haven't snipped this yet. I should have realized the tweaking that I was doing down here shouldn't cause this issue up, up the top. So now our coolant loop over here is behaving again. Um, maybe I should put some radiant pipes over here. Uh, it shouldn't heat up that quickly, this room. Or this area, anyway. A surprising amount of heat is leaking out the sides here, it looks like. Also, running the three electrolyzers is a bit much, I think. It's too hot to grow the food for the Dracos. That's a problem. Um, I don't particularly want to limit our oxygen production based on heat. So... Maybe it's about time I just made more aqua tuners and had a couple more cooling loops we'll give it some time and see what happens I think I might set this a bit more aggressively cool, though. Like 20 degrees or something. In fact... We're just gonna... We're just gonna set this so low that we're effectively banning this until the base cools down. And then we'll... We'll make sure that all of this is going to cool sufficiently. I would like to build insulated tiles here now, but... There's literally just too much water in here for that to work. The airlock doors did a good job of keeping the heat in up to a point, but now it's a bit much. I guess we could add some radiant pipes right about here. Lead should be fine. And the rest of these as well. And the loop is hiccuping as we swap the pipes out. Not sure exactly how they're pulling that off without uh, letting water out, but I appreciate it. Okay, so we got nice cool coolant coming through here. You know what I could do, actually? Hmm. 
Okay, if I always... If I always run this so that the coolant is just above freezing, then the base is eventually going to get too cold, right? Oh, it's actually surprisingly cold over here. Oh, no. Um... Wait, what? Why is it this cold here? The liquid pipe is 30 degrees, 24 degrees, but this is only 18. I guess the water coming in is a bit cooler. It's only 14 degrees here? Oh, wow. That's weird, the coolant loop doesn't even go this far down. How is this only 14 degrees? Uh, hello? Maybe you forgot a snip or two? Maybe. Um, but I have a... I'm very curious as to how it's so much cooler where our water pump is. Which is in turn keeping these hydroponics nice and cool. I guess I don't necessarily need to change that. But my concern was uh, if I'm aggressive enough with the cooling are certain parts of the base going to get too cold? But maybe that's not something I need to worry about so much. Uh, can we still get in here and build another aqua tuna if if it's at 70 degrees almost too cold is better than too hot probably I was thinking we could still have the one loop and we could cool it more aggressively based on a, sense, a temperature reading from over here. Or over here. So that if the, if the area in front of the cooling loop is hot enough, um, we'll run it all the way down to like two degrees or something. Okay, I'm going to try it. We're going to see if someone can build this without getting scalded to death. Okay, that's promising. That's very promising, actually. Surprisingly good. I didn't realize the Atmo suits would make it safe to go into a steam room. I'm definitely going to take that into consideration in future. What's the best way to give the dupes access to a room that we want to keep heat in? Multiple airlocks? Bunker door, Lamel. I mean, I'm guessing... High thermal conductivity. Okay, not so much. Thermally reactive... Uh, high conductivity... Thermally reactive... Yeah, I don't think... I don't think doors can be good for keeping temperature in, but if we have more of them, it would take more to get through it, right? All doors metal-based? Hmm. Oh, we actually built it already. Okay. Uh, so we're going to put a bridge here. We're going to have 
insulated pipe up here. And down here. Does it matter if it's insulated? Probably not. We're going to snippy this. Actually, no, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing here, except our temperature sensor is probably just going to be this one, honestly. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I want to check here as well. So we're not going to run the thermo aqua tuner if there's a risk of freezing the input fluid. But we're also going to check this temperature up here. So we're going to say... If... Uh, if both of these... I'm just trying to think which logic gates to use. Um... I think we need the not gate from this. So we take from this red wire. No? This effectively acts as, a, as an AND gate, but not. Both of these have to be false for this to be true. Um, temperature at both points over here has to be above x degrees, or rather below it. So maybe I should have used an AND gate here so this would be easier. We want this temperature to be above, say, 16 degrees, and this temperature to be too high, so above something. So green here and green here. So we want an AND gate. Uh, AND gate. And we can squeeze that in uh, here, I guess. Let's get some wire. So if either of these is above x degrees, then we want that condition to be true. Uh, and if this is above, like, 16 degrees, if all of those conditions... Are, if this condition is met and either of these conditions are met, then we'll run the second aqua tuner. Because the area that the coolant is going to next is rather warm. This isn't a torture camp colony. You probably don't want naked dupes in steam. Yeah, no. Um, I'm just hoping to get it to the point where we never have to go in here. Maybe that's a bit naive. I do have a couple of ideas of how I could cheese it if I do need to get the dupes in here. We could like push the steam further in. <laughs> Maybe. Alright, where's our... Oh wow, that's 1200 watts. We can't run two of these. Uh, we can't run two of these on a conductive wire at the same time, which means... Which means we would need a heavy watt conductive joint plate, which is going to leak heat like crazy. Damn it, I didn't think of that. I guess since we've got coolant running through here, we can let some of the heat come up this way. Put it above. 
had one steam machine. I, I think I'm just going to have to... I'm going to have another... Um... What's the word? Power transformer. Also, I'm just realizing right now, I think there's only one power transformer delivering to this entire wire. That's a thousand watt maximum. And we're somehow running the thermo aqua tuner sometimes. Which needs 1200 watts. Oh, wait, here it is. There's two of them, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're gonna move these storages. Just so we can power one more aqua tuna. We need a transformer here. And everyone stops what they're doing. Fantastic. I'm surprised I'm never seeing saturation with the oxygen, but whenever I check it, it's looking good. I guess it's just a long way to go to saturation. Temperature is starting to look good. Cool. So the system we have does work. Uh, we just want it to be a bit more aggressive at cooling when we do generate heat. Use another transformer. Yes. Vivim, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Game's getting a bit slower. All right, transformer, right about there, wire bridge, conductive wire, down to here, two transformers just for this aqua tuna, and like so. If I had room for a bigger one, we wouldn't have to produce quite so much heat for it. So if our steam system works properly, it really doesn't matter. Transformers don't leak power like batteries do. I need that wire finished. Okay, it is finished. Wait, 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 there's a bit missing. Uh, and this temperature sensor needs to be, let's say, above 16 degrees. So we've got to... Wait, wait, wait. How cold does our coolant go? I forgot. It doesn't freeze at zero. It's, like, very comparable to polluted water. Brine properties. Freeze point negative 22. Hell yes. Okay, so... Uh, 22 plus 14... I mean, negative 22 plus 14, negative 8. It's just to be safe, we'll say if we are above negative 5 degrees, then we're allowed to run this thermo aqua tuna. And please finish the wiring. Fantastic. Okay, so we should have some nice cold coolant running through here if the temperature in this room is above a certain amount. And if it is, we can probably infer that some of the rest of the base needs cooling as well. So now we've got double thermal aqua tuna? How did this run out of power? Oh, wow. 
Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. The natural gas generator doesn't have a gas output. Well, there's your problem. The last one that we added. Even so, um... What's the setting on this battery? Kicks back in at 50%. So if it's getting to zero, we really don't have enough power. Okay. This is a lot more aggressive power consumption than we're normally doing, though. Maybe two or three of them? Two or three of what? Aquatinas? Right then. How's our temp? Oh, that looks nice. That looks very nice. Look how cool this room is now. 12 degrees. Oh, 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 I set this too low. Um, I mean, it's probably fine if we, if we cool it that aggressively. Right, right. I'm actually curious to see where this goes. If I, if I keep the coolant that cold. Nothing's going to break over here, right? You know you're doing well when your factory room is cold. Probably. That's a lot of hot stuff that was inside the storage. Look at what a dramatic difference uh, the temperature in our bases experienced in the last, I don't know, seven cycles. Two or three of the other batteries. Um, I mean, I think they're still going to reach zero. The battery is really just a tool to decide whether we should be running um, our generators. Speaking of which... I didn't connect this one up. And we're actually just sitting at 100% here, which means we're wasting natural gas. I suppose if we are going to be doing this in bursts, more batteries might make sense. It will cost us in terms of uh, leaked power, but at this scale, maybe that's really not something I should be worrying about. I could put the smart batteries up here. We can actually fit three of these really snugly. And I don't think they're going to care about the environment, right? Overheat temperature, 75 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put... Let's move our batteries up here. And... Circuit wire is going to go here. And we'll just... Wait, wait, wait. No, that's wrong. Uh, what are we doing here? Not... Not low on natural gas. We're making sure that a little bit of natural gas is available for this. I guess. 
But then what's the point of all of these storages? I think this was supposed to be the last natural gas storage in the sequence, and it ended up being the first. So actually, this should go here. And this should be snippy snipped. And... Uh, we should be reading from this one, and not this one. Oh, I can't run automation wire through that. How about there? Why does it look like I can? That's weird. Uh, in that case, it would look neater if... We do it a little bit like this. Glad I double checked this wiring. Alright, copy settings. And once they finish building this, do we still have lots of lead? 24k, that's not bad. And I'm sure we can get Lots more still. Where is the lead? It's the shiny stuff. Well, the shiny stuff other than diamond. There's still quite a lot of it. I should just dig out the whole oil biome. More or less. Um, okay, so... Can we get this finished? I think everyone's chilling. Yep. Lance, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Nuke the pip army. Too many? Oh, wow. When did this happen? Are they still happy? Critters 8. Glum. Uh, Critter metabolism. Okay, they're happy in terms of the number of critters. We still have harvest ready branches here so they shouldn't be having trouble with starvation have they just oh now they're cramped lol let's take the eggs away And I don't think we have a storage for pip eggs. Uh, where would I like them to drop some natural plants? Probably down here. Somewhere. So how many plants do we, uh, critters do we have? Nine now. not getting enough polluted water. Where are we getting the polluted water from again? Uh... From the bathrooms. Do we not have enough pips producing polluted water? I meant tubes, not pips. Even so, um, they shouldn't be having trouble with food. Critter metabolism. There's food right here. Did we get rid of the extra? Yeah, we did. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Oh, again, I thought that was 35 tons of dirt. It's 35 kilos. Um, Alright, so this is going to be... Hip egg. And we're going to let them hatch wild. What's the details on the pip happiness? Uh, the one that is glum says critter metabolism negative 80. Or oh, there's two of them at least that are glum. Three? I can't click on them all. All, all of the ones that we can see that are glum say critter metabolism, but we've got arbitrary that is ready for harvest. I mean the happiness stat? Uh, happiness, negative one. Tame, negative one. Find one of the happy ones. Happiness, groomed plus five, tame, negative one. So some of them haven't been groomed lately. Uh, can we make that a priority? Here we go. That's quick. Now he's happy. What are we printing? Uh, we've got a thousand and two blossom seeds. Can we do anything with that? Blossom seed. Bristle blossom. Seed. Uh, it doesn't go into a food recipe or something. You can compost the seeds for dirt. Okay. Let's see. Compost. Uh, that would have been good to know sooner, but I didn't realize we had such a surplus, though. Contents dirt, two kilograms. Where do I... Where do I decide what we're composting? West DX, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, compost, compostable meat, berry, blossom seed. How do I compost the seeds? You can copy settings from a compost pile, but it seems to just be priority. If I remember correctly, you can select compost on the items itself. On the items itself. So, blossom seed? Compost. Can I not automate this? Do I need to make a storage bin low priority for bristle seeds? Wait, where are the seeds? Are they all just lying on the ground? Blossom seed times one. Automated seed, co seed compost could kill a colony? How so? Because it produces heat or something? Pollution somehow? Compostable blossom seed. All of it. Bring it all over here. You, 
could run out of seeds by accident. Only if we pour up all of our bristle blossoms, right? We don't actually ever need to replant them in this game. Besides which, we've got 450,000 calories. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though, but you never actually have to replant these. Yes? Look at how chilly our factory room is. Automation grid, current ambient temperature 11.5. We're still running the aqua tuna. How cold is it going to get? I wonder. Only if they uproot from water or if you remodel the base. Okay, cool. They're not... I thought they would move things from storage bin to storage bin. Uh, if we set this storage as having a high priority. I guess we could look at... Well, that still doesn't solve the problem of how do we automate composting for the seeds. What I was thinking about was shipping, uh, auto sweepers, and it looks like we would need two of them to not quite cover everything in each room. Which is probably fine. Just limit the weight so that they will only store 50 or so at a time. Um, but even if we do automate the moving of seeds to a certain place, how do we automate composting of the seeds themselves? There isn't a machine that does composting, surely. Or is there? I don't think so. Steamed duplings? Schleppers. I was just scrolling back to remind myself if I said hello. Steamed duplings. You need fish to utilize the seeds. Wait, what? How does that work? And why are the blossom seeds not being moved here? Oh, do I have to mark them for sweeping manually? Uh, in that case... I guess we would want, um, I guess we would want an auto sweeper. Who are you going to, who are you going for in the GF tomorrow? Who are you going for in the GF tomorrow? Grand finale? Budgie bum, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Fish eat seed and poops polluted dirt which you can compost. Hmm. That is something I haven't tried yet, making uh making a Paku farm. For now I'll just sweep up the seeds and mark them for compost. So ha let's have a look here. Paku Uh, they do indeed convert blossom seed to polluted dirt. 
And I'm guessing the polluted dirt sitting in uh, polluted water, as long as we're dealing with... We're preventing the off-gassing of the polluted water, right? Um, as long as we're dealing with that, we don't have to worry about... Polluted dirt doesn't off-gas, does it? Now that I think about it. So pretty much anything we feed to Paku gives us polluted dirt. So they are another kind of dirt factory. But they can convert something that we've got a massive surplus of into dirt. Kevin, thank you very much for the resub. Much appreciated. Four months, thank you. So it begins. Thank you for a lot of Verdon good content. You're welcome. Thank you so much for hanging out and for the sub. I'm getting a little distracted. We were supposed to be working on solar panels today. But one thing leads to another, I suppose. Have we made any more iron or steel? 31 and 39. I don't remember. We've only got 500... Oh, that's why we're getting distracted. We have to somewhat mass-produce steel. Talking about the AFL Grand Final. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. So why are we still not getting blossom seeds delivered? I definitely swept this. You can tell. And we've got a container that has a one job. Blossom seed. Max priority. Very that autocorrect indeed. I was wondering if I was learning a new word today. I guess it, I guess it is a word if it was autocorrected. Probably you have a nine prior blossom storage closer. I don't think I do, though. Um, I, th I think all of our storage bins that accept blossom seeds are just cryo 5. There's 77 kilos of blossom seed right here. So I think we can... Well, let's check something real quick. I don't think they'll take from one storage to put into the other. It seems like. Top priority and they're not doing it. I don't understand. Errands. No pending deliveries. Uh, can they not reach here? They can definitely reach here. They should move between storages. Yeah, so why... Blossom seed. Is it somehow different from what we've got? Compostable blossom seed. Seed blossom seed. I think this is probably it. Uh, okay. So, seed blossom seed is what we need to request over here. For some reason. Apparently these things are different. Boofy, thank you very much for the raid. Holy... Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Vlad, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rimworld today. Nice. Beat Rimworld. Fantastic. 
So does that still get ship into space? Or I'm sure there's other endings, especially if you have the DLC, right? I was left behind on the planet. Oh no. Very anticlimactic ending. So what, what exactly happened? Ops, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Went with the classic get ship into space ending. Fair enough. Damsel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. No endless raids. Oh, I see. That's how it was anticlimactic. Alright, can we... I don't think we can... Like, mark these for composting while they're in the storage bin, right? What are we printing? Uh, hatchling eggs? Why not? Delicious omelettes. What about torrents? Only two raids the entire time the ship was being built. That's unusual. Doesn't it usually, uh, like, trigger raids all over the place? Thousands of Yorkies. <laughs> we left behind an entire planet full of Torrance's babies. A Yorkie haven. Three raids, don't think you caught the first one. Okay. I love those random, uh... What, it, what is it called? The events where the a bunch of animals go crazy and attack. And sometimes it's a swarm of, like, cute critters like rabbits or something. But sometimes even that can be extremely dangerous. Because a single rabbit trying to attack can, like, slow movement and things like that. Oh, I need to get rid of this uh, battery. Let's get that over there. So how's our coolant system going? Oh wow, that's nice. That is very nice. But I don't think it's ever going to reach uh, zero degrees, actually. We're up to 76 degrees on the water. If they have rabies, even being bit can kill you. Yes, yes it can. Uh, so yeah, we added another Thermo Aqua Tutor. Um, I was considering that maybe next time, instead of having one big cooling loop for the entire base, uh, I should have separate cooling loops, even if they all come back to the one uh, steam room. But basically what we had was one aqua tuna, one big cooling loop, and the areas just after the aqua tuna uh, could get very, very hot very easily. So this could get very hot, this could get a little bit hot. Uh, this is always generating heat, but if we're not keeping up, then this area gets hot as well. Lots and lots and lots of heat comes out of the metal refinery when it's used. Uh, and straight into our coolant loop. So we ended up with, like, lots of heat here, even when the rest of the base was pretty cool. So what I did was added another Thermo Aqua Tuna. This one has a lower target uh, temperature for the coolant, but instead of just trying to get the coolant in the loop down to a certain temperature, uh, it's also checking the temperature in this room, which is like the first and probably biggest, potentially, uh, source of heat. Oh, we didn't swap that out. Um, so if this room, uh, at this end and this end... Oh, I didn't change that yet. So these two liquid pipe sensors are looking for above negative 5 degrees. Um, if that's true, we are not 
going to run any of these machines that produce heat. And if that's if either of those are above negative five degrees, and this coolant here is not so cold that it'll freeze, uh, then we're going to run this thermo aqua tuna, and we've been very aggressively cooling. Uh, part of the base ever since. Maybe I have set this a little bit too high. I think we're in danger of our mealwood getting too cold. So this is actually working extremely well. What temperature are we at here? 11 degrees? Let's say we want a target of 15 degrees for our factory room. Which means we are now allowed to uh, make some more iron and steel. Someone should be along shortly. Oh wait, it's probably rest time. I just heard the bell. Yeah. Also, hi T-Hacks, I've been lurking. Hope your day was great and you're feeling better. I am feeling a bit better, thank you. Thanks for lurking. Water cooling loop? Are we building a PC inside of Oni? Yes. Yes, we are. It's a little bit easier than building a cooling loop IRL. Just a tad. Um, but yeah, I think in future I would probably have separate loops for areas that are more or less uh, generate heat consistently or in big bursts as opposed to just one big loop for the entire base um, but each loop would need its own thermo aqua tuner so maybe not because this is working pretty decently I mean, you can see, like, all of this was cooking uh, earlier today. And you can see how much heat... Oh, wait, we haven't... Oh, wow. We have already pulled all of this after making more iron. I want to see this happen. Here we go. Ben Wu's on the job. No, he's not. Then we quit the job. Nice, that's all working. Oh, I didn't get to check if our... If our system for maintaining the water level in the reservoir works well. So we're still adding fluid. How much is here? 260, 270, we need 500. It is climbing somewhat slowly. Uh, did I miss this? Can we make this top priority for a second? I want to see someone operate this. How is, how is no one, hello? There we go. Whiskers is on the job. Oh, supplying, I see. There we go. Okay, so we should see quite a lot of heat coming out of the metal refinery once it does a recipe. Did you actually stop short of doing one recipe? Are you... It's disabled by automation grid, actually. That's surprising. I didn't miss it, did it? Did I? I'm still confused about what, uh, if that water turns into steam, where does it go? Uh, we've got a steam turbine. So, once the steam hits, I think it's 125 degrees, uh, it can be consumed by the steam turbine and comes back as water. And we can, uh, we basically convert that heat to electricity, uh, and 
slightly violate the th laws of thermodynamics because the heat basically goes poof. But how does it get there? Oh, um, this is how you build a steam in, uh, steam turbine. So those five tiles below the blocks are where the steam needs to be, uh, and it sucks it in. And the steam turbine itself, weirdly enough, you have to keep relatively cool. So it's got built-in steam grabbers. Yeah, that's what these thingies here are that we can't select directly. I understand now. Thank you. You're welcome. You are welcome. Uh, I think I already did this, but... Oh. Low threshold 5%. Yeah, we're not running the coal generators unless power gets low. How is this not... No automation wire connected. That's fine. These should all be in sync. Why are we not running... Generator idle disabled by automation grid. Did I break it? No, we're actually low on natural gas. Okay. I guess the age of power abundance is temporarily at an end. 15 cycles until this natural gas geyser starts up again. Uh, 66 cycles until this one does. So I guess we do actually need to tap into this one down here. Um, I guess we should just do a big gas pipe for that. But this, uh, this gas pipe is actually just going down this way. I think instead of taking the natural gas that we use for the gas range from our storage... Well, no, we will do that, but the gas pipe going up and down the main bus we're going to use for input rather than what we're using it for now. So... How about down here? Is that going to be okay? I think so. I don't think it's going to get in the way of anything, and we can easily sort it out if it does. Let's get rid of these bridges. What's this for? Oh, that was chlorine. Uh, I know where we want to put chlorine. Actually, we're not filtering it. I'll deal with that later. Uh, let's remove... Let's make this a bridge for oxygen. So we can have a pipe going both ways. Potentially. Over here. And then... Snippy snip this part, temporarily. Snippy snip this part. And then gas bridge like that. Fantastic. Um, and I think we want to remove this bridge. Oh, what's this? Yeah, no, that's that's totally fine. And we are filtering whenever we take natural gas in, we're making sure that we get rid of anything else. Okay. So that doesn't need another bridge or anything. We will need a bridge here and here and once we are able, uh, right here. There we go. 
bet dupes get their eardrums popped every time they go in there. They only go in there with a uh, Atmo suit, so no. Actually, that is some chlorine pressure, right? We had like dozens. That that may be a slight exaggeration, but we had a lot of gas reservoirs trying to store all of the chlorine that ended up in the lower areas of our base. And then I turned this into vacuum uh, before pumping in just chlorine because we want to kill germs. And killing germs we have been. It's been very effective here. Uh, I, I just pumped in chlorine and found that we can actually store a ridiculous amount in this area by just cranking up the pressure. Uh, and I, I just happened to already have set up an Atmo suit dock because I didn't want the... Uh, at first I used an oxygen mask, um, but the dupes actually exhale CO2 in the sealed room, uh, which is a bit of a problem. So Atmo suit dock it is, and... They do not get their eardrums popped. Okay. So, now that we've got that sorted, we need to get... I guess we are going to have a bridge here. That's fine. There's literally one thing that consumes natural gas other than the generator so it's not like we have to plan that far ahead so switch to atmo suit from gas mask did not notice very kind <laughs> this is almost like not torture camp colony it never was a torture camp colony how dare you i am shaking and or crying Um, okay, I guess we'll just go around this one. Why don't I just use another bridge? And how far do we need to go? Here it is. Around natural gas. Um, I guess let's build an airlock. doesn't have to be anything too special unless we extend the base all the way down here which isn't happening anytime soon we'll put a gas pump right about here and we'll just suck in everything until we have a vacuum I think I don't know, once we do have the vacuum, I should probably wait for a certain amount of gas pressure so as to not waste power. Um, but we'll save that until after we've created a vacuum. Can they not get in there? Why haven't they built these insulated tiles? Unreachable, but they can stand on top of the airlock door. I wonder if the dupes can stand on top of the airlock door, but somehow, like, the pathing doesn't understand. Well, it's probably fine anyway. Unbreathable. Unreachable. This automation wire is allegedly unreachable as well. That's a problem. Okay. So. Gas pipe. All the way over here. And through here, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, we don't want to break this until the airlock door is built. And the airlock door should be a slightly lower priority than the power supply for it. Oh, we have no power this far down. What's the maximum power on this? It's actually only 480 watts. Wait, no it's not. Current load. Max load is 1690. Okay, alright, fine. Um, we can probably afford to run lead wire all the way down here. Yeah, it's a little expensive, but it's not that big of a hit. Compared to how much we've got. I should just set this as... This is a higher priority, basically. Well, no, I'll set the gas. No, 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 no. Priority, three. There we go. And priority six on the wiring over here. How do I... I just want the wiring for priority six. Can I not do that? Do I have to... Do I have to cancel it? Okay. Conductive wire... It doesn't have a... I can't set the priority as I go, either. That's unfortunate. Alright, let's just go priority six. All of this. Especially the wire. And priority five for the airlock. That should prevent a dupe from getting stuck in here. Working airlocks are pretty neat, right? By the material choices. Is that door he just placed a mod? Yes, it is. Uh, it's an airlock that works. That's all. I think it blocks water as well. I'll definitely take the mirth leaf. Could probably put some more arrow pots around the place. Oh, they're still using the manual generators. Let's see to what extent we can pretty up this area. I don't think we can actually put that there, can we? Uh, we can, but it won't let us put a plant there. Happy critters. How many do we have? Nine. We need to move this egg. Get some more wild pips. Uh, I wish I could search this. Critter egg. Pip egg. My priority. And why don't we sweep? I should probably start turning this lumber into something useful. I think the ethanol distillery needs it. Uh, no liquid output. Lumber into ethanol. What do we use ethanol for again? Nosh sprouts. I do want to try farming those. But probably after we get better dirt throughput. You can set build priority by the material choices. Uh, build priority. Oh, here it is. 
Sneaky. Alright, it's going to take a little while before that's built. Obviously. We do have an accidental waterlock or two, but... I would rather be safe than sorry. And I don't have to worry about this if I build the airlock. How's our tank? Beautiful. Not as beautiful with the heat leaking out the side here, but... It's not that big of a deal. Considering that... Doors conduct heat pretty well... I think I had the right idea last playthrough where we just had the dupes come in from the top and delete tiles temporarily if we needed to do maintenance. Because as far as I know there just isn't a way to have a good insulated door or series of doors. Apparently a really thick stone door would just be too difficult. Why haven't they built this yet? Uh, let's do an out... Oh. Let's do an output from the transit tube here as well. Pump not in gas, you don't say. Oh, here they go. Fantastic. Oh right, I made these priority six, so no wonder the other build wasn't done. That airlock isn't locked, is it? Which one? The... this one up here? Seems like an airlock would be pretty close to the best insulator you could have. Two doors with an air gap. Yeah, if we had, uh... You mean like, uh, if we had a manually built airlock like this, right? Well, this would be insulated tile, but still. Uh, I guess at this point we could use... what is it called? Uh, a mini gas pump instead? But just the fact that this would be vacuum... Uh, would make thermal conductivity a lot weaker, right? A vacuum gap, yeah. A manual built one uh, probably would insulate better, yeah. I think that is what I'll do next time. I don't have... well... I do have room to make that happen. We do have the... Uh... Uh, the miniature gas pump, after all. It's fine if we don't care... Wait, no. It's gonna let the... Because it, it's gonna let whatever gas is in here into the airlock. Not to mention the water, which means we're gonna have to filter the output. Manual built one that doesn't block liquid. Doesn't block liquid though, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about. Uh, so we would either want gravity to keep the liquid out, uh, and we would probably need a filter to put the steam back in. Mostly just thinking the modded doors should conduct a bit less. Yeah, because I think they're acting as just like one door, 
right? There's there's vacuum in here, but it doesn't technically count as vacuum. There's just like there aren't really empty tiles here. It will be all steam eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's up to 77.7 .7 degrees now. 78 over here. One thing that I wish I knew sooner was just how long this would take to flash to steam. Because we haven't needed... Uh, a steam turbine. We haven't needed that technology or the plastic to be able to have a heat sink uh, for a very long time. So when... I mean, we do need steel to make it work, but the problem with steel is heat. Uh, it's not like high technology. So... And clearly we've been making some more metal. Uh, we're down to 30 and 37. Trying to make more steel. Uh, yeah, so I wish I had known when I was a bit newer at the game that this amount of water, for example, will store an enormous amount of heat before you actually have to deal with the steam. And come to think of it, I guess when it does flash to steam... Uh, the steam can get quite hot before you need to necessarily bother flashing it back to water. We could maybe add a sensor, now that I think of it. I've heard that hotter steam gives you more power. So we should probably, if we still have the chance... Uh, let's see. Atmo sensor... Temperature sensor, thermo sensor. We should probably put a thermo sensor directly below where the steam turbine is going to be. And we're just going to wait until the steam reaches X degrees before we run the steam turbine. Turbine sucks in only 2 kilograms, thus could have saved on water. Would be all steam eventually. Yeah, I left room for expansion here. We could fit 4 steam turbines. Which I would think is going to be overkill. Um, I would certainly hope so. Did we get the wiring as well? We did. Good job with trim. Let's get you healed. So it is now hot enough in there to get scalded. Disable all inputs blocked. Well, yes. Yes, they are. Uh, let's set this to above... I don't know. 175 degrees? Is it 200 degrees is the maximum? To get the most efficiency out of the steam turbine? I think someone said that. Uh, steam turbine. It, of course, tells us nothing of the sort over here. But I think this, uh, this display right here shows us that it's more or less efficient, depending on the temperature. Um, I've been keeping this space scanner here because I wanted to compare the behavior of this one compared with this one. I'm sure it's going to work a lot better once it's actually exposed to space. But I did notice a difference. Um, it seems like the space scanner up here reacted more quickly to an incoming asteroid. I usually do a double layer of small amount of water and polluted water on top. Water and polluted water on top. Uh, why would that be? And why haven't... Oh, we've got a lot of build jobs still. Was it Alt-S? There we go. 
Yeah, we've still got unreachable build. Whoops. So that probably means we've finished doing this. Actually, they haven't built this stuff. Oh. Well, well, that was a little bit of building that stuff. I've seen the dupes stand on top of this. Why are they not reaching? Not to mention the ladder is obviously enough for them to reach this automation wire. Let's get some temp ladders over here. Actually, I just need the one, I think, to reach that. They really don't want to do that, apparently. Hey, hey, Andy Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Who wants to work in vacuum? Everyone. At this rate, we're going to have the natural gas guys at number two erupting before we get natural gas from the one down here. Good thanks yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Did we get those eggs? I think we have to sweep them. We did sweep them. Where did they go? Uh, tip egg, priority nine. Oh, 16 kilo, we do have it. Okay, so then we just drop that out there. There's eight of them? Oh no. Trying to fall asleep maybe? Good luck. So I might have made a boo-boo in my SE playthrough? What did you do? Part of the fun, right? Might have to high priority that stuff. Because there's lots to do down here before something is functional and this will just take a second. Should see someone popping out of the pipe quite soon. Oh, there they go. Veldak having a good time, as, as usual. <laughs> you would think they would enjoy the transit tubes. Especially since there's a rec room item. Uh, vertical wind tunnel. So this is for recreation. But the transit tube is makes them make the unhappy face. Alright, so Atmos sensor above... I don't know, how much... What kind of pressure will we get for the natural gas in here? I'm sure 500 grams is enough to make sure the gas pump isn't wasting power. Scaling back in my near future, my green chip build was bidding out 60k per minute so I went and replaced all the beacons with wide area beacons now it spits out 101k per minute nice I've been using editor extensions to the varying degrees trying to future proof uh, the early game builds that I make so if possible I fit it so that we can simply add basic beacons and later a single wide area beacon um the only trouble is in builds which we do multiple uh, production steps in one block uh the ratio is going to change so we're not going to be able to simply upgrade that one by adding a beacon I mean, we can, it'll just make the ratio bad. All 
Alright, so we've probably got enough natural gas generators. Uh, we definitely have enough to consume all of the natural gas uh, sometimes from both of these geysers. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if the third one doesn't 100% of the time push it over the edge. But we can power most of the base from this. Where did our pip eggs go? Oh, right. I have to not... Wait. I thought... Oh, this is not marked for sweeping? I mean, it is marked for sweeping. How do I... Pip egg. It's not marked for sweeping. But then... Critter egg. Pip egg. errands I don't understand why are these pip eggs marked to be swept like automatically some things where I want that to be the case don't do that like with the seeds speaking of seeds uh, let's drop these here, and blossom seed compost. How many blossom seeds are there here? 1112. Do I just have to click one of them to mark them all for compost, or do I need to, like, drag something over them? It might be the storage unit saying it doesn't have any filters. But I did this before, and they put the pip eggs back. Oh, why is he so cute? He's tame. Oh no. Oh no. He's supposed to be wild. That's why we dropped the eggs here. Um. Does that mean he's going to be sad if he doesn't get grooming and... And we're going to have to feed him or he'll die? Do, do they not have a wildness value if they were born in... Does It, it counts as being born in captivity, I guess. Isn't there a percentage somewhere for how wild they are? Or have we already gone through a generation or two? And they're just... They're all tame forever. This is... Where's the old one? Did he, did he die already? We had an elderly... Uh, Pip... I think the elderly Pip is Gonski. Tiny baby, indeed. Does the egg have wildness stat? Oh, that would be weird. It does. What? Wildness, 0%. At 0% wildness, a critic becomes tame, increasing its metabolism and requiring regular care. Wouldn't you call an elderly pip a pup? <laughs> I don't know, would you? Uh, how many pips do we have here? Nine. They're glum because cramped. Or they're clam cramped at least. That egg is tamed, yes. Tame egg. Sense making. Um 
I guess that means I have to start murdering old pips. Uh, the oldest one is 61, but the next oldest one is 48 cycles out of 100. Feels bad. I think we should probably make some pip omelets. How many are available? Nine. Let's get them all. Time for pleasant chit chat while killing pips. Yeah, I really wish there were... I, I, I wish there were better options for controlling their population. Uh, with, shall we say, more passive eugenics? Than... Zapping them to death when there's too many of them. Sloder took 1% damage somewhere. And he's fine. So now we're down to 8 critters, including the egg. Is it time to automate butchering? Yeah, we can fully automate it and turn our eyes away and pretend it doesn't happen. How's our dirt? Still basically zero. Uh, we are composting. So now the blossom seeds, compostable blossom seeds, are put in here. So I guess once they're marked for compost, they get stored under this category. Does that mean we're just waiting on errands for people to put the seeds in here? Thanks, Whiskers. Okay. Do I have some way to select all of these Bristle Blossom seeds and mark them for compost? Or am I just going to have to do what I did before, where we sweep them all... And then set this as the high priority storage for seed bristle blossom. And then drop the seeds out of the container and then select them for compost. I guess that's how that's going to have to work. I won't have to do it too, uh, too often though. I already did over a thousand of them in one go. 10 kilograms of soil. Nice. We could pr probably put some more uh, compost things here, though. And maybe I should extend the cooling loop. Is composting gonna, like, not work if it doesn't get hot enough or something? That's probably how it should work realistically, but stored temperature. Stored items will reach a temperature of 75 degrees over time. Emitting dirt 100 grams a second. One kilogram per one costable, uh, compostable unit. So a thousand uh, seeds, it was like a thousand and twelve. Uh, so one ton, we can get like one ton of dirt out of all of those bristle blossom seeds. I'm not sure exactly how much a ton of dirt is really. How fast do we use it on mealwood? Ten 
10 kilograms per cycle. So... 100 cycles? All of those seeds would keep a mealwood going for 100 cycles. Well, it'll help. I definitely want to get a Paku farm going so we can automate this better. Then we can use uh, priorities of storage or seeds to make sure that we keep a few around just in case. Alright, how's our project going for getting more natural gas? Mostly pretty good. Oh, we've got the... How did this happen? We built the airlock door before we built the final piece of wire that it needs, even though I set the priority lower. And it's made out of the same material. Bruh. I think a ton is a thousand something kilograms, yep. Uh, could you... Matrim, could you build this immediately? How about... If I tell you to move... And then... No? Who's doing it? Veldak. Uh, where is Veldak? Kind of far away, but we do have the hole, so it won't take that long. The climb back up will be fun, though. Okay. Airlock door. Fantastic. And I'll set this as a higher priority than... It already is a higher priority than all of this. Okay. How much plastic do we have? 3.6 tons. That's not as much as I was expecting. But that's fine. We could probably go ahead and upgrade more of these ladders. Oh, that's like all of our plastic. Uh, okay, never mind. Up to here, maybe. That's fine. Why have we not built this? Oh, we have built this. Dub. Uh, how about... Math seeds? And the decor... Is not even noticeably better. So far. I don't think it is possible to have decent decor where there's... Industrial machines. The dupes just absolutely despise them. Spending an awful lot of time on manual generators lately. Alright. Uh, now that the airlock is done, give me that natural gas as soon as possible. Oh, it's erupting as well. So we need to get in there sooner rather than later. Oh, and I just realized they're not going to be able to get through here. And 
Fantastic. Almost done. At least the geyser isn't over pressure now. We do have it queued up to be analyzed. We don't have power. Why don't we have power? We should have power. Oh. Oh, that's a bit scary. Uh, plastic? Sure. How's our coal doing? We're actually super low on coal. In fact, is there any other use for coal besides shoving it into the generator? We need it for ceramic and refined carbon and vitamin chews and curative tablets. And carbon dioxide. Lol. Alright, so nothing particularly urgent. But... We're basically out of coal. Which is pretty much because we're out of natural gas. And our power usage has gone... A bit through the roof. Next activity, 8.6 cycles. Next activity, 60 cycles. Yikes. We just really, really need this natural gas now. And because the airlock is working intermittently... Well, it's actually... It's got a charge. I think it'll work when it has quote-unquote no power. As long as it's got charged... Uh, electricity here. Let's see, does this say unreachable build? Unbreathable. Yeah, no, it should be fine. As long as no one ends up stuck on this side, but I don't think that'll happen. Cramped. What's your age? 80? 42? 80? Let's have some hatched eggs. Uh, all of them, please. And we'll leave the stone hatch egg alone. Actually, yeah, why don't we... Why don't we just have an indefinite order to get rid of regular hatchling eggs? Ooh, smooth hatchling. What does this do? Smooth hatchling. Copper, gold, iron, wolframite, aluminium. Uh, yeah, we, we don't want that. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think we want a smooth hatchling, actually. Hatchling, stone hatchling, smooth hatchling, sage, I don't really want... So I'll say goodbye to that. What's the problem here? Illumination, because power. Oh no. Power affects our food generation. Good thing we've got 400 calories stored. Oh, we're close. We're very, very close. We just need wire. And Cavern is on the case. 
I wish it would jump to follow cam when I clicked that. It really is quite a long way down. No wonder it took this long to build this. And there it is. Let's double check that our natural gas is going where we need it to. Uh, we need this bridge just gone, actually. And... What? Why isn't it... Oh, it's probably because of the bridge that it's not going to the gas filter. There we go. That wouldn't have made any difference in the long run. Talem Grandmaster? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Smooth hatch is good if you have low access to cooling, since you can refine metals without heat produced. Wait a minute. Oh no. Did I... Okay, you do lose metal. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. I didn't actually look at the output product. Whoops. But... Yeah, it's... I, I wouldn't want to sacrifice the actual metal. Um, I mean, that's why we're using the metal refinery and not the rock crusher. Besides which, we do have a way to deal with heat. This is surprisingly empty. I should maybe set this target a bit higher. As long as we've got a saturated pipe coming out of it, that's the main thing. And we have room for when uh, the metal refinery sucks in a surprising amount of fluid and then dumps it out. We can't measure the fluid that is in the metal refinery. So we need to leave uh, plenty of slack for it. If I hadn't included the liquid reservoir and connected the loop to the metal refinery, there would have been problems. There's no setting of recipes or limits or anything for the fertilizer synthesizer. I guess we just don't have another use for phosphorite. Phosphorite. Uh, the apothecary uses it, actually. Hmm. So we should probably limit consumption. So that we don't use all of the phosphorite next time. Oh wait, we need a smart storage, don't we? Uh, let's see, automation wire does not connect to a regular storage. So, smart storage bin, and wiring goes here. There is a moth on my monitor. There we go. Okay. I guess we do have room to make this, to change this from oxygen mask to uh, atmo suit, and that'll get rid of the eye irritation. I'll wait till this is built, and then I'll forbid this door, uh, and then we'll swap it out. Oh, 
Okay. We're looking for Foss. Uh, where would we find it? Yannick? No. Miscellaneous? No. Industrial ingredient? I don't think so. Uh, cultivable? No. Agriculture? What's right? Okay. Highest priority. And the wiring. Sixty watts? Wait. Do we need 60 watts continuously to check if something is in a storage bin? Really? Really, really? That is a bit much. I'm just not going to worry about it for now. We're going to wait till we're really power rich before we spend on something like that. What people do is automate it so it will do the check only once or twice a day. Hmm. So how does it work? Do we not have automation wire? We do. Uh... I'm not seeing any settings. Sends a green signal when bin is full. Oh. Full slash not full. That is not very specific. Oh, I guess we change this and that changes the definition of full. Will it show if it is giving a green signal even if it doesn't have power? I guess not. So we could just set a timer so that we only give it power like once a day or something and pulse it into a memory cell. Uh, let's see. Switch. Does it have an automation wire connection? I think it's just manual. There's a there's the equivalent of that somewhere though, right? Uh let's see. Signal counter signal switch. No, that's the equivalent of the power switch. Timer sensor, germ sensor. Is it under power? I don't think so. Automation. Power shut off. Power shut off. Which one is it? Oh, this thing? It doesn't look like what I expected it to look like. Connects to an automation grid to automatically automatically turn power on or off. Okay. And we can have an automation system. Uh, what is it called? I, I saw one that was basically cycle sensor. Green signal and red signal schedule within one day-night cycle. Okay. And then we would have to run the power through that. And then we would need a memory cell or something, right? Memory toggle. Green signal to set the port bracket S. Uh, send a green signal will set memory to green. Sending a green signal to the reset port will reset it back to red. All right, then. So when we have... I'm going to have to remove this wire. Uh, 
when we have the target amount of storing 1846 out of 5 kilos, the display actually changes based on our target. That's good. So that tells us how it's going to work with when it sends a green signal. Um, is 20 tons a lot? Maybe we could wait till the bin is literally full and send a green signal for that day. We'll see. How, how fast can this thing consume? Fertilizer, 120 grams per second. How many seconds in a cycle? Uh... 50.26. Does it tell us somewhere, or do I have to do the math? 50 divided by 458. one basically. So, 10 minutes per cycle? That sounds about right. No, wait, 6 minutes per cycle. Heck, W? Cycle. Um, yes, is a lot, but the check doesn't turn off the ability of dupes to use the storage. Yeah, no, I just want to turn off the machine when we check and find that... that this storage bin isn't full, or quote-unquote full. Uh, Wilksek, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, alright, did we get rid of those wires? We did. Alright, so we should be able to fit a memory toggle. Which one's the output? Probably that one there. And we're probably going to need like a not gate. So the memory toggle needs a green signal on one or the other. Wait, let's just double check this real quick. Yeah, the right one is a reset. Okay. How do I want to rotate this? Like that. The memory signal needs a not gate like this and a green signal like this. Wait, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to only be sending a signal. Hmm. Nope, that's not right. Because the knock gate doesn't need power or anything. It'll just... This will stop sending a green signal. That'll become red. Hmm. I see you want to have some material reserve for farming. Uh, for... Yeah, there's like a few other things that Phosphorite is used for. It's not that big of a deal, but I would rather have it available when we need it. Um, it's actually pretty much just the medicine. Oh, it's literally just the medicine. But this is a problem that we're going to want to solve for some other resources as well. So I'd rather get it done. But... Since it's taking a little bit more thought than I expected, I think we'll do that after we upgrade this checkpoint. Where is... oh, wrong pipe. We've already stopped... oh, okay, we haven't stopped getting natural gas from down here. Why is it coming in bursts? Probably because we don't have that much power. Yeah, it's doing the, uh, 
like bootstrapping kind of thing. Where the more power we have, the more natural gas we have, the more power we have. That's why it's sputtering less and less. And now that we've got some stored, it's going at full speed. Fantastic. And that means we're going to save a bunch of coal and duplicate labor. Beautiful. Uh, decor value in here is not being helped that much by a few plants and aero pots. Alright, so let's get this... where is it? Let's get these upgraded. Stations, is it? Atmosuit dock. Atmosuit checkpoint going left. And... hurry up, please. It also means duplicants aren't going to exhale into this room. So I could probably change this from detecting natural gas to detecting gas pressure. And we'll make this more or less a vacuum. Unless we run out of storage space for the hydrogen. Mil Dorado, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello to you too. Uh, can we get this built? It's morning now, so yes. Fantastic. And deliver suit. I always die in first 60 cycles. Yeah, it takes a few... Yeah, there's a few things that have to be figured out. Still not dead, how do you do that? Uh, well... We use... Geysers that give us water. Or... Electrolysis. Gives us hydrogen and oxygen. We consume the excess hydrogen with a hydrogen generator which mitigates the electricity cost of running the electrolyzers. I'm using gravity to filter the hydrogen and oxygen, uh, which is saving us a, a bunch of power since we're not using gas filters. And it really, really, really helped. Uh, it probably saved me like another playthrough or two figuring things out that I got a cool salt slush geyser. Uh, so brine came out at negative 10 degrees, which I used to cool the base while I was still figuring things out. Uh, and incidentally, it makes excellent coolant. Um, it's about as good as polluted water, except it doesn't off-gas uh, polluted oxygen. Um, but yeah, that really, really helped uh, getting into the mid-game. Also, something I wish I'd known sooner. If you make a thermal aqua tuna, uh, you can make a coolant loop. And eventually we're going to use steam to delete the excess heat. Uh, but it is actually taking an enormous amount of time... Uh, for this body of water here to flash to steam. So that'll buy you a lot of time. As instead of letting your base cook. I always get low on oxygen or have high temperature. Yeah, uh, this is the way. Assuming you don't get lucky enough to have a cool salt slush geyser. Uh, super close to your start area. Um... 
pump heat into a big water reservoir like this, and hopefully by the time it flashes to steam, or by the time it gets to like 200 degrees steam, I think that's the limit for efficiency for the steam engine, uh, for the steam turbine rather. Uh, hope uh, this will actually buy you a ton of time, because the heat capacity of water is really, really, really high. That's why I'm able to run all of these uh, natural gas generators off of geysers, and I haven't. I haven't produced or consumed a single unit of steam yet. Well, technically I accidentally produced some steam up here because we made the, uh, the glass forge too hot. But that's okay. We're still trying to make glass, but it's not cool enough here. It looks pretty cool. We're trying to get it down to 15 degrees. Degrees. Why is it... Why is it this metal refinery is full of coolant? Oh, I was gonna say... It was probably still just filling up with coolant. I was gonna say, why are we seeing gaps here, but this is totally full. Yeah, that'll sort itself out. Maybe I should have more reservoirs for the coolant. Like a reservoir right after the metal refinery might be a good idea. Could I fit that elegantly? Should I build it out of something that can take more heat? 75 degrees sounds like a lot, but maybe it's not. I would need something to put it on. Say, like this. Oh, I can't build a tile where there's drywall. Robo Jumper, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Kind of put that thermo sensor in the way of the ladder, but that's fine. So if I do this, uh, the output from the metal refinery is gonna go. That should be insulated, actually. Probably. Up here. And then... Output... Whoops. Output down here. And we're probably still going to have the bridge in the same place. I think. Or it should it be right before the... Uh, it should probably be right before the metal refinery. Now that I think about it. Yeah, so this is all wrong. Uh, how about... How about I just put this here? Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. And we're just gonna have this pipe go up here, and this pipe go down here. Sh 
should be okay. Bridge back up this way. And once that's in place, we'll snip this. That might help. So when the metal refinery does a recipe and it suddenly needs a whole bunch of fluid put into it, uh, we'll just keep this full. But I'll keep this one mostly empty, as we have been doing. So that'll rush back into the system. It should work, I think. Okay then, now that we've got the Atmo suits finished over here, let's see if we can't design our... Okay, the part, the power management part is easy. We're just putting a... Uh, what is it called? Power shut off? that's going to be connected to... to what? I could actually, instead of basing it on cycles, uh, I could try and make it so that once it's full, the power shuts off. And then once it's empty... No, no, that's, that's a catch-22, because it needs power to report. Uh, so we'll do a cycle sensor. If I can remember where it is. And we'll switch this thing on briefly once a day, probably. Depending on what kind of options we have in the cycle sensor. What is this plant's problem? Body temperature. Oh, it's too cold? Uh, 16.8 degrees, and it's looking for 20 degrees. Okay. Maybe we're being too aggressive pulling this room. Below 15, let's try below 20. So we're now allowed to run the metal refinery. And it's pumping out less heat than I would have expected. Okay, now it's getting kind of hot. Okay, and then we snippy snip this part. Totally tubular. I got an achievement. Something to do with the transit tube. Did we finish this? That move sensor above 500. Oh yeah, we, we finished that ages ago. What am I talking about? We also got our natural gas which is already running a bit thin in here. How long is this thing running for? Next dormancy, 43 cycles. Excellent. And this one is going to start again in 55. This one's going to start again in 4. Or 5 even. So we might just have power continuously. From natural gas between those three geysers. Cycle sensor. Activation time, activation duration. It'll send a green signal for 100% of the day. Okay. How about... no. 1% uh, of the day? Question mark? We probably only need a momentary pulse. 
0.4% of the day. Perfect. And activation time, I couldn't care less. It's the frequency that we're looking for. Um, I wonder if I could make a pulse generator instead. Pulse generator to a memory cell. So that once the storage bin is full, it sends out a memory cell saying that it's full. No, 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 no. We do need power to read from the storage bin. We're back to that catch-22. Okay. Uh, so... Here we go with actually building this. Nope, we're just storing. We've got a surprising amount of phosphorite right now. Wait, was it phosphorite that goes in here? No, uh, phosphorite? It is, right? Yes. Alright, so... Power is disconnected most of the time. Once it is connected... Uh, if we are full enough... Let's, let's wait for it to be full. If we're full on Phosphorite, we want to send a signal to our memory cell. Put that here. So green signal is going to switch it on. And... We need red signal to switch it off, but only if we know that this is powered, because a red signal is just the absence of a signal, so if there's no power, we'll have a red signal by default. Big brain? It's a little bit more complicated than expected. So we will need a not gate. Oh. I think it solves itself, maybe, because, no, I think we need two not gates, because we're checking if, if this is powered. The condition we're looking for is this is powered, and this is outputting red. Would an exclusive or do the job? Could it be the other way around? If this is not powered, then... This has to be outputting red, which means... Ah, uh, too many variables to remember. We're trying to check if we're getting a red signal from here, but also a green signal from here. Is it possible to get a green signal from here, but a red signal from here? It is not, because this has to be powered for this to put out anything but a red signal. So I'm pretty sure just an X or exclusive or gate uh, from these two should be all we need. I hope. Wish it took up a little less space, but that's not really a problem. Okay. Why do we have no power? Generator idle. We've got natural gas. Disabled by automation grid. Huh? I think I may have got this... Oh, I see. This is actually correct. We're not using up the last of the natural gas. We're saving 37 kilos for... The gas range, which needs to consume power anyway. Maybe we shouldn't do that.
There's already going to be a little bit of natural gas reserved for the gas range just because of the shape of the pipes. Uh, I could just bring this over from here, but I actually don't mind having... It's actually quite a bit... It's fine. Yeah, let, let's actually get rid of that bit of logic. There's a decent amount of... There's a decent amount of gas stored just in the pipes on the way to the gas range. So we'll just connect that directly. And it doesn't matter if we use up the last of the natural gas in this reservoir. Assuming that it doesn't suck out the natural gas that's in these pipes as well, which I don't think it can. It, it definitely can't suck it out from this side of the gas bridge. Okay. And in comes my trim. And we do need to connect these as well. That a high priority. Can't you just hire another dupe and let him overwatch it? What do you mean overwatch? Let him shoot a sectoid if it moves? Three quarters of a day. I'm going to increase the activation, the active duration, for testing purposes. 10% of the day, that should be like one minute, right? wire connected. We missed this one. All this automation, cheap labor is better? What about free quote-unquote labor? Automation is a force multiplier for labor. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's uh, move this forward a bit. So we can see it attempting to work. Couple of seconds. And it switches on. It's sending a green signal. Why is it sending a green signal? I thought it was supposed to output green when the bin is full. Sends a green signal when bin is full. Uh, we've got it set to the maximum storage. The phosphorite is 12.9 tons out of 20. Why is it sending a green signal? Oh. I think I know. I think it sent a green signal to our memory cell. No. Hold on. The memory cell is here. This this color of automation wire connector thingy is an output. Did I rotate this wrong? I 
think I might have... Okay. It should look like... Yeah, the output is on the left if we face it this way. Which means it was supposed to be like this, but that would be in the way of this one. Okay. I don't know how, but the memory is... Probably because we momentarily got a green output from the XOR gate. Uh, the memory is set to output green. And just the way it renders... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is outputting red, but it looks like it's green because it's connected to a green wire. Okay, then. Let's hurry up and get this bit moved, please. Priority... all of it. Wait, what did you just deconstruct? Probably a piece of wire or something. Why are you leaving? Can we get someone back here, please? For this top priority deconstruct. It is top priority. I didn't... Oh. No, 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 no. Memory toggle. Yeah, it is marked top priority for deconstruct. No, top priority short of emergency mode. Everyone's chilling, that's why. Need a night shift? Maybe. Uh, barbecue? Sure. We'll take some barbecue. Uh, those pip eggs are gonna hatch not wild. Whether we like it or not. As long as we've still got young ones, we'll just keep taking all the eggs, I guess. happy for a bit longer. Is this not marked for deconstruction? There we go, finally. Okay, I might want to remove the wires, we'll see. Probably. Memory toggle. confused again. Why do we have the XOR? We want to toggle the memory if this is on. If this is on but this is off, we want to reset it. So that's the reset wire. And this is the toggle wire. The switch on wire. So just like this. Except this wire goes here. And snippy snip, we don't want that wire doing anything. And that should be it. Is that not connected? It is, we just can't see it. So if power is on and uh, red signal, which means bin is not full, 
then reset memory cell to red. So don't run the fertilizer synthesizer. If power is on, uh, and output from the container is green, if we're full, then we're not going to send a reset signal, and we are going to set the memory cell to green. If there's no power, it's impossible to get a green signal out of this, so we don't have to worry about the other side of the XOR. Uh, the other possible input that would trigger the reset. Trigger a green output from the XOR gate. And there it is. Now we just need to test it. Here we go. Our is yes. Uh, fullness is no. Therefore reset. Therefore red signal. And once the power is disconnected, we've still got the red signal, of course. Now we need to just see it full enough so that we can test it, uh, test it switching on and keeping the, uh, keeping the memory cell active until the next day. I guess I could just redefine what full is. So we'll change the cycle. So it's going to activate pretty soon. And let's extend the duration so we can see what's happening. Power is yes. Full is yes, XOR is no, don't reset, do write to the memory cell, memory cell green, do run the fertil uh, fertilizer synthesizer, and then put the duration down to almost nothing. Oh, why did the memory cell reset? Nani? Let's try that again. Okay. And then? Well, we've made a very complicated and useless power switch. Do I need to... Do I just need to ta uh, change the timing? Is it... Uh-oh. Do I have to learn about signal timing for this game? One job? Is this happening because... Tick by tick... This signal is propagating out and we're getting our reset signal... A bit later... Than our set signal? When it switches off, that is. So, when it switches off... Whoops. I heard three distinct bleeps there. It's not even... ...subtle. We might even be able to see it just by pausing, unpausing. Okay, red, red. There's no power here, but we're still outputting green from the XOR gate. Well, there it is. 
XOR gate outputs a green signal if exactly one of its inputs is receiving green. Both of its inputs are receiving red, it's outputting green. And it's doing this because it takes a non-zero amount of time uh, for signals to propagate. So how do we solve this? I don't know, and I think I want to take a little break. From this sort of thing. So we'll come back to that some other time. Now that I think of it, an actual break would be a good idea. My brain is not at 100%. Let's do some words on stream. Just 2.6 more cycles until our second natural gas geyser is active. Uh, we are getting natural gas, just not a whole lot of it all the time. Next dormancy... Oh, it's not outputting at the moment. 54.2 cycles every 89.8. So it's not going to be outputting for a little while. Why so short? You Can't you just let it work half a day? I'm trying to completely minimize the power that we spend on the smart storage bin. So I'm trying to make it so that once a day we give it enough power to output um, whether it's full. And if it is full, we're going to write to a memory cell to say, yes, you can consume uh, phosphorite until we check again. If it's not full, we're going to say, no, don't do that. Um, but we need... We need power... The, the trouble is the... The uh, smart storage bin outputs red if there's no power. And we need to check, is there power and it's outputting red? That's the XOR gate. If that's true, then we reset the memory signal, uh, the memory toggle. If we ever get a green signal from, uh, from the smart storage bin, it means we're writing green to the memory toggle, and we can run the machine. That's what's supposed to happen, but just the time that it takes for signals to pass through makes this circuit not quite work because it holds on to the green signal from here for slightly too long. And it resets... Uh, it resets the memory whenever it switches off, regardless of the state. So we need to figure out either... Now we're going to change the signal timings, or hopefully there's a more elegant, simple, uh, small number of combinators, a uh, small number of gates solution. Uh, but yeah, let's do some words on the stream for now. We'll get something to eat. Whoops. Uh, I need to do the... Okay. There we go. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Nicely done. Alright, let's continue, shall we? With some Oni. And I think... How much steel do we have now? I'd like to make moves. We've only got less than 1,200. I'd like to start trying to make something up here, but... It's not that easy. I guess the first... My first goal should probably just be making a space scanner that is surrounded by protective tiles. Is it okay if... Wait, why am I able to build this? That doesn't look quite right. Um, I would guess that just one tile of bunker tile is going to be enough to protect it from what I've seen. But... It frankly looks terrible. I think I'd like it to look something like... I know I don't have enough materials. Like this. So we're looking at... Uh, 14, just under 2,000 steel, I think. It's not that far off. We did use a bunch of the steel that we made for a Thermo Aqua Tuna. I'm surprised this isn't filling up. Disabled by automation. Enabled by automation grid. Work errand. Evil plot is actually on the way right now. So steel is happening. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Why is our coolant loop not moving? Is it because this is outputting? It's got priority. And now it moves. Okay, that's fine. We do want it to work that way. Actually, that is a reason it should output to the liquid reservoir. Should I have two liquid reservoirs here? We do end up with some fluid in this liquid reservoir whenever the whenever the metal refinery does output it blocks this fluid from moving which means we fill this up a bit so that next time the input can go straight into the reservoir without slowing this down except that's still going to get gaps in it. It's probably functionally fine, but I would love it if we could... Oh, this is pretty easy, actually. That bridge is kind of in the way. Um, but basically, I'm just going to connect... I want to connect the output from this reservoir to go straight to the metal refinery, but also straight to the loop. I don't know if it can work that way. I think we're going to be bottlenecked on the output pipe. Maybe. We can try it. So I'll put a bridge here, this will go here, and snippy snip this. Should probably work. 
How many hours will it take for new space exploration win in your opinion? Is it slower with new version? Well, I have to learn a bunch of new stuff uh, and the recipes are more complicated. But at the same time, I have a bunch of things figured out that I don't have to think through again, so it's really difficult to say. I also don't know just how long and complicated 0.6 with K2 is going to be, just in general. So now I really want to see what happens when we use the metal refinery. But we're waiting on the temperature to drop. Uh, half a degree. Or maybe over this side is still too hot. No, I think we're good. Or bad, actually. If it's above 20, we're not good. And over here, it's... 14? What? How's it so different? Okay. Here we go. So once that is finished... Yeah... We only get one pipe of output from the reservoir. So I don't think that's going to work the way I hoped. Also, I forgot to snip this bit, but it doesn't really matter. Hmm. The question is, as well... It's actually pretty easy, now that I look at it. How can we make sure we accumulate some liquid in here? And for that, I we, I just need an automatic liquid shutoff. Uh, on the opposite side of it. The problem is, however... That we can't put liquid shutoff behind these buildings. So that's looking a little bit awkward. I also... Oh, I was going to say I also can't put it in front of the drywall, but that's not true. This tile actually counts as being part of the rock crusher. So... All the way up here. That's not going to be reachable with a ladder, is it? Okay. So we're going to remove this liquid bridge, put it through here. We're not going to let the coolant go anywhere until this is somewhat full. And we're going to bridge it back down this way. Pretty sure the tubes can reach that. keep wanting to come back to the design for eventually getting solar panels. But we just need ludicrous amounts of steel. Which we have done what we need 
to get that eventually, but cooling takes time. I guess we're also still making more glass than we need to. Um, how much glass do we have? Two tons, 2.3. And solar panels cost only 200 glass. I could already make uh, 11 of these. What else do we use glass for, I wonder? Whatever the case, I think we will stop making glass for a little while. If only so we can focus on steel. Plus machinery. Good job, Whiskers. Okay. Liquid bridge down here. Gonna need some power. And automation wire says look at how much we have in the liquid reservoir. It's gonna output red signal when full, green signal when low. I think we want the opposite of that. We want to stop this flowing until this is full. So we need a not gate in that case. How do... what? Oh, there we go. Let's cancel, not deconstruct. Not gate. Like so. We're making it out of steel? Oh no. Oh no. Um... I don't know how much of this stuff we've made out of steel by accident. But let's take it back, if there is any. Probably up here as well. I should have realized something was up when we had an amount of steel that wasn't a multiple of a hundred or something. Is that an actually creating any jobs? Awaiting delivery lead. Yes, it is. Cool. So that gives us a bit more steel. Uh, can we prioritize this, though? What are we printing? Uh, nothing. Fantastic. You can change the material, at least that was the case before. The blueprint will be made of steel. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh, you said that before I noticed. You can't change the material. You can, uh, it's just that... Okay, if I put down wire as copper, and then I go wire as iron. This won't actually do anything. It's still queued up to be made as copper, but if I build copper wire and then I drag iron over it, um, it will get replaced. So I'll just demonstrate that here. You can check what you built from steel by accident with the material view. Yeah, but it's all over the place. Uh, actually, this is perfect. Half of them are built, half of them are not. We're going to go wire, iron, drag that over. And you can see the copper, uh, the wire built of copper ore is left behind. And the wire that was... The wire that hadn't been built yet doesn't have like an upgrade plan here. And now this is made of iron, this is made of copper, this is made of iron. Yep, 
You changed the blueprint of the automation from steel to lead. Yes. So this right here. Uh, oh, it's still made of steel because it hadn't been built yet. Good point. If that's what you were saying. And what about the knot gate? Lead. Alright, cool. I think we might have used steel automation wire here because when I used it up here things got so hot that it actually broke when it was made of lead. But we're managing the temperature here now so it should be fine. Oh, and what are we setting this to? Um, high threshold 100, low threshold... I don't know, 50? If this gets half empty, we want to... Stop letting liquid through. Until it's full. Once it's full, the loop will continue. Terra Soldier. I need help. The steam in my aqua tuner slash steam turbine combo won't get hot enough. It's running permanently, but water temp refuses to go past 101 to 104. Ouch. And we're almost there. And loop go burr. Fantastic. That is going to cost us another 10 watts all the time. So now the empty loop needs to have quite a bit of brine added to it. Uh-oh, that might cause the aqua tuna to run when it shouldn't. Send green signal if above. Send green signal if above. I think it just sends a red signal if there's no water detected, right? Or is it a green signal? I need to see what happens here. Once the gap catches up. at 1.5 uh, 1 tons. We're getting there. Little by little. I don't think we need this anymore. That's been consuming an extra 120 watts all the time. It's pretty cheap though. I mean, any continuous power cost is not great, but still. Look at that lovely decor. I think we can get rid of these. Red decor is best decor. Oh, here we go. So there's no fluid here, it's outputting red signal. That's good. There's no fluid here, it's outputting green signal. Above negative five degrees, which means this thermo aqua tuner wants to run but it's got no input. I guess that's not doing any harm. 
why salt water over polluted water? Polluted water has higher heat capacity. They're almost identical, um, but the brine does not off-gas uh, polluted water if we end up spilling it somehow. Freezing point, negative 22.5 is what I'm most interested in. Specific heat capacity, thermal conductivity 3.4 and 0.6. Polluted water. 3.4.6, negative 22.5. Oh, we can compare them directly here. So, yeah, specific heat is a bit higher. The thermal conductivity of brine is actually higher, so that's good. And it can go colder as well, if we want it to. That's not that much more specific heat capacity. It's like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And this has higher thermal conductivity. Just a bit higher. I'd say it's a side grade, and I prefer it. Also, uh, to begin with, it comes out of an infinite source at negative uh, 10 degrees. The off-gas is nice, yeah. Um, so I actually had my coolant loop set up. It, not exactly a loop. Before I had the aqua tuna and the steam set up, uh, I was actually just running all of our water that we were... Uh, before I put it into the desalinator, I would run all of this through the base um, just to cool it a bit. A hundred C versus negative ten? Wait, what's a hundred C? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're getting it getting it from an infinite source, absolutely. Very lucky to get a cool salt slush geyser so close to the base on pretty much the perfect time as I'm learning the game to really exploit this when I needed it the most to get into the mid game. Uh, lib lib Tick, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, welcome, Freeman. My PW is already cold-ish, so taming a hot one just to replace it isn't worth... Yeah. Um, so where are we right now? We're still trying to fill up... We're waiting for more... Salt Slush Geyser. I could just take advantage of this bit that we've got here. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. I don't think it's going to fill the loop. If I want this to be full, that is. Let's try it, though. Uh, above zero? Actually, below a million. So we're going to keep adding that to the loop. We're probably going to empty this before I change that back. Never see a stream on Discord? No idea how it works. It's really easy to set up. Okay. Um... How's our steel, though? Uh, 16.34. We just need four more recipes. And we sh... Or well, three or four more recipes, and we should be ready to... Uh, to build a shell around where we want to put a space scanner. I think I would like to put it underneath this regolith. Hmm. 
The regolith is going to act like sand, right? Like it's affected by gravity. So I should probably try building my bunker door. Is this regolith? Mafic rock. Mafic rock, mafic rock, mafic rock, regolith. So I'm going to need to go a little further down, I think. Like here. And then bunker tiles. Will that be okay? It's going to output... We can only look for meteor showers at the moment. Uh, and it outputs green when there's a meteor shower coming. Bunker door presumably does not close on a green signal. Uh, auto inputs, green open. So we need a not gate. I guess we don't need these on the side uh, if we start here. What happens if I make Regolith fall onto this? Is that going to be okay? Probably. It's probably just going to block the machine from working like sand does. Ooh, free glass. Take that. So I think we can probably get started on this immediately. Uh, let's put an airlock door. I don't know exactly where I want to put it. I'd like to, this to all be nice and neat eventually, but there's no rush. So why don't we just... Wow, that abyssalite is still cold. I definitely want to minimize uh, cutting through the abyssalite. How hot is this? Wow, 159 degrees? That could be as much of a problem as building up in the void in the first place. How hot can this thing get? It doesn't... It does have an overheat temperature. The space scanner doesn't list an overheat temperature like the aqua tuner does. So maybe we don't have to worry about that unless it literally melts. I hope. What about solar panels? Solar panels have an overheat temperature. So we won't be building those until we figure that out, but I think we can probably get away with this. What about the bunker door? Overheat temperature a thousand degrees. Okay, that's fine. And the lead wire should be fine. Update and so on. Let's just make sure. Automation wire, lead, not gate. And this isn't regolith. So it's not going to fall on our heads till we're ready. Let's get an airlock door probably here. It's going to be about as good as it gets. 
to not let the heat through. Now that I think of it, we really don't want to let all of this heat in. So I think we should make... I guess we're already letting a bunch of heat in up here. There's a bit of CO2. No, 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 no. What I was thinking about is we should probably do the... Vacuum door. To help keep the heat out. Space exposure. We can see which tiles have space exposure. Right about here. Hmm. Space will make vacuum anyway? Yeah, I'm hoping to find a really good spot where I can just... Just sort of have vacuum in the right spot. I think here is actually really good, just coincidentally. So this tile right here has space exposure. This is still abyssalite up here. That'll be a vacuum. And then we'll have like... Uh... Well, I, I guess we won't need the extra door, right? We just need to physically separate it from this rock. Probably. We will be needing... Conductive what? I mean, uh, transformer? At least the way we're going to do this so far. Have you got conductive? Conductive wire. And set this lower priority. Actually, let me cancel it until we've got the wire built. Unreachable. Also, don't forget to plan for the suit stock. Yeah, we've got plenty of space for that here. Okay. And we wanted to put... Airlock here. Lower priority than the wire. It's built out of the same stuff, so there should be no reason that they would build the airlock first. suits. Checkpoint. We can go here. And at least one dock. Docks are quite cheap, honestly. Let's just put those there. And we will need our oxygen. Hmm. Gonna need a little bridge work here. Bridge goes here. Snippy snip that one. Pipe goes here. Bridge goes here. And up we go. I don't care about putting that. It's fine. And a bridge. Fantastic. Uh, priority. Lowest possible for these ones. Probably need to make some more Atmo suits. And I feel like there was something I had to remember down here, but... 
Oh, right. I wanted to prioritize this bridge so that we don't lose time on our power source. In fact, can we just up priority that? Hopefully someone... Nope, everyone's asleep. Sleeping like babies through the yellow alert. Here comes more metal. Fantastic. It actually takes a few cycles of moving this fluid before the thermo sensor heats up. How is our supply? Oh, better than expected. We're actually getting pretty close to saturating the loop already. I don't know if we're getting maximum efficiency out of this pump. It looks like we are. I am glad I set it to keep a bit of a reserve here, uh, though. Just using the hydro sensor, the idea was simply to not waste power when there was almost no fluid here. But keeping a bit in reserve isn't bad either. Alright, so... There it is. I think we've saturated our loop. There should be no gaps anywhere. It's not moving as fast as it should, though. Something's a bit off. I think it's probably... Yeah, we need to keep a little bit of slack in this one as well. Might be the case. Uh, okay, so... 80%? Isn't that hydro sensor too high to catch the pressure under the pump? Uh, it'll give us a reading of zero if if there's no fluid there, which is how I'm normally setting it. But I wanted to uh, get some fluid back into the network here. Let's see. I don't think this is going to resolve it, though, because... We're preventing the flow on the output side so that this gains fluid, so that there's a reserve to go straight into the metal refinery. And that's the theory, anyway. But we still end up with these gaps, because we can only get one type of output from the liquid reservoir. It should still help prevent having lots of gaps, uh, bigger gaps in the coolant loop, though. I think I actually need two liquid reservoirs. I would need to have two liquid reservoirs. One of them outputs to down here. It also outputs to this one, which only outputs to this one, and then like some latch behavior between them or something. And then we're still gonna get time where it only outputs at half speed, I think. It's not worth the effort. Especially not with the corner that we've painted ourselves into, despite starting with a very large room. This is functional enough. I see our coolant 
is making the rounds at full speed, so I'm not too worried about it. Use your cutting tool and pipe everything tool to fill and empty until your cooling loop is at 99%. Uh, do you mean to make some slack in here? It's working anyway. How much steel do we have? Uh, 1500 still. Uh, we don't need that much, is what I realized. If we're going to start here, as opposed to trying to build it up here to begin with. Actually, does Regolith... I know Regolith stops the asteroid hits, but I'm guessing Mafic Rock does not. It's useful as a construction material. Iron rich variation of igneous rock. Hardness to very soft. Oh, as in digging. Uh, generic buildable solid raw mineral. Does it tell us if regolith stops stops meteors? It doesn't mention it here. I think we have to assume that the Mafic Rock will not stop uh, stop the asteroids. We can get rid of this though. It should be safe. Oh, we're finished. Overheat damage? Did we just get a report of overheat damage? Or are we saying that could happen? Oh, it's here! Yikes! Okay, um... Wow. Alright, uh, I could run my coolant loop all the way up here. Or... Or what? I could put the Atmosuit docks in an insulated room. That might help. I don't think we need this space scanner anymore. We're done playing with that. Should have turned it off a while ago. Does lead reduce overheat temperature? Uh, is it the lead or is it the atmosuit dock that's... It's the atmosuit dock that's getting overheated, not the lead. The, we've had lead automation wire here eight, for ages. Oh, you mean we built it out of lead? Yes, it does. Negative 20. 75 degrees, so 55 degrees. What's the temperature here? It's, it's only 55-ish. Yeah, I think a much simpler solution would be to just build this out of something else. Uh, can we prioritize deconning that? Any other non-lead material? Yeah. I just didn't realize Atmosuit docks and checkpoints could overheat. Or that it was quite that hot here. Um, let's see, stations, dock, we could make it out of iron, that's way more than enough. Unfortunately, this does mean that we're paying heat to get the materials for this, but in the long run, it's really not that big of a deal. Checkpoint. And... Wait, don't do the checkpoint out of lead this time. 
uh, stations. Checkpoint, iron, dock. I'll just make doubly sure. Dock out of iron. And one, two, three, four. Actually, we really don't need more than one for the time being. If we're going to pay iron for it, that's our precious uh, metal refinery time. Which means lots of time spent cooling it down. Although, now that I think of it, we could... Ooh, that heat. Nope. I was going to say we could be a bit more aggressive uh, making our metal, but... You know what? I think we should have a separate cooling loop specifically for this, this room. We don't want to cook the base even a little bit when we make metal or glass. Okay. Um, I guess it's not too late. Actually, we don't need a third aqua tuner. We just need to change the way we do this loop here. So... Just play with these pipes a bit. Instead of these bridges... Let's snip those. I was about to suggest a dedicated cooling solution for industry. Indeed. Yeah, I was considering that uh, earlier, but I ended up deciding, okay, the industry comes straight after the aqua tuners, so why don't I just set this aqua tuner to go even colder than this one, if the temperature here is high enough. But, like, that works, but we still get a bunch of heat ejected into, you know, the rest of the base, but especially here. So we're just going to keep that cooling loop separate. I think this part of industry, the power plant, can stay on the main base uh, coolant loop. That should be fine. So we're just going to connect these like so. And we should have a good amount of of coolant for this loop here already. Cooking the Drekos fits the theme of this base better though? How dare you? I'm gonna cry. Shake and or cry. Um, where's this gonna go though? How do we go around this aqua tuna? What's the, what's the best way to spaghetti this? Probably just... Bridge this way? Okay, first I'll figure out how I'm going to get up here. Preferably in a way where we don't have to go back into this room. So... Oh, that's a problem. I think I'll make this little loop part of this one. That'll be easy. Get rid of these two bridges. Snippy snip. And connect that like so. And then, where's the output? Here it is. That's going to come down here. And needs to find this spot as input. 
which is going to be a little tricky. Actually, not that tricky at all. Except that we would have to move the temperature checker. I don't particularly want to do that. I wish we had longer pipe bridges. That that would that would make a huge difference. Uh, let's bring it through here, maybe. I think we are gonna have to go into here and get scalded. Just a just a little bit. Oh my goodness! All right, bridge over there. But then we're running more pipe past the aqua tuna that's going to eat up the heat that the aqua tuna produces. It's going to be more waste heat. Or is it's going to be less efficient? Is it's going to put more of the heat that it produces, cooling the fluid in the pipes back into the pipes. Um, and that's terrible. I think we need to move these pipes a bit. I just don't want to. Uh, this is the water pipe. We don't want to mess with that. We're not messing with that. I wish you... I was going to say I wish you could rotate the aqua tuna. But you can do that. But I don't want to have to get back in there. And I don't think it would help here either. All right. This is gonna bridge down here somewhere. It needs to go back up here. It's not quite right. What a mess. Um, of course I set it up so that the bridge at exit is here. I think I should just stop trying to work with what I've got and get rid of a bunch of it. all of those. They don't belong to any particular pipe now. And I need this one's output to end up here, but not... But that needs to stay by itself. I think we do have to move this bridge. Which probably means bridging this and bridging this, which doesn't look great, but what are you going to do? Uh, water comes from down here. It doesn't have to go two directions. So we could maybe bridge like that. Who's getting scalded? Oh, what are you doing there? I guess we figured out where people are getting slightly damaged? Question mark? Okay. Let's see what we've got. I think I put that bridge in the wrong place. Because the idea was to be able to have a bridge here. Let's let that water drain. More 
more scalding. Benwu again? What's he doing? Repair supply. Repairable storage proxy. Wait, where are you going? Oh, okay, he went to the bed. Good. Scalded in vacuum. Yeah, apparently. It's 97.1 uh, degrees here. We are outputting a bit of carbon dioxide. Uh, just to vent it to space here. Maybe it would be worth bringing the vent all the way to exactly where the vacuum is. So that there isn't gas here, or there's very little, and it reaches vacuum more quickly. Alright, how does our pipe look now? Good. So I want pipe like this, and like this. And then, bridge down here, it's gonna go there, that's our main loop, um, this part might have to change because we might need to make room for the output, I could move this bridge, that probably would make things a lot easier, actually. So that would go down here. That would go over here. And this would go here. And we don't need these. And that doesn't have to be a bridge, actually. And we don't need that bridge. There's a pipe there. Kevin's getting scalded doing the job that I just queued up. Now it's Matrim's turn. Kevin, what are you doing going back there immediately after you just left? Oh my goodness. Now what? Uh, how are you getting scalded? Oh no. Uh, this piece of ladder is too hot. That's bad. I think what we'll do for the moment is we'll only let the dupes go up that way by using the transit tube. And once this flashes to steam... We'll build some insulated tiles here. And we won't have the door conducting heat. Oops, indeed. How's our... Wait, why are they not being finished? Damage overheat. Oh my goodness. Why is it so hot? It's 221 degrees in this room. Has it just been gradually getting hot here since the beginning of the game?
I don't remember anyone getting scalded by coming in here. We might have to cut off this whole area. Meteors generate heat, so it has been heating up since the start of the game. Good to know. So it's not some mistake that I made. Let's deliver a suit. So we need to figure out Oh god, it's going to be dead by the time someone deconstructs this. Well, it's just a bit of copper or something. Uh, so eventually we have to figure out how to remove heat from the asteroid itself. At... At scale. If I were to just bring water here, it would flash to steam. That is worth considering. Meteors start the first time you break the space layer. I see. Rip power transformer. Is this one made out of... Iron. And this one was also iron. That's not great. So we need to hurry up. Maybe I could make this whole area vacuum. Just to not let the heat through as easily. Uh, let's finish our coolant loop. That's kind of important. Why haven't they finished building it? Oh, because it's sleepy time. Here we go. Ended up dropping some brine. There should still be tons of it, as far as we're concerned. Must have dropped some slush down here. No. Why is there plastic? Oh, probably because. Okay, I have no way of accounting for why there's plastic here. And I was going to say probably because we deconstructed those bits of ladder, but why did it fall two tiles to the right? There's our natural gas. Yeah. Why can't I find this? There we go. Fantastic. Scalding. It's to be expected. Maybe I need to make this whole area require Atmo suits. If they carry stuff and bedtime kicks in, they just drop it? Oh no. I gotta keep an eye and make sure no one gets themselves completely wrecked here. We've got eight more trips through this door before it stops working, if we don't power it. I think we'll be fine. Fantastic. 
Alright, that should help with the waste gases not conducting heat through here for as long. Simply Coco, good to see you again. Well, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, I guess we don't have an Atmo suit lying around. Let's make one. And for that we need even more iron. Jet suit requires petroleum. I still haven't bothered with that. Since we got all our plastic from Dracos. Uh, the CO2 is finding its way to this corner. So I don't think this made much of a difference, actually. Hmm. I probably should have done this where there was complete space exposure for the room. A pneumatic door doesn't slow down gas in any way, does it? I could simply put a manual airlock here, leave it open until there's vacuum, and then close it. That'll probably work. Give that a try. Now then. We need some ladders. Coming up here. High pressure vent and wall it off. We don't need high pressure. Um, it's going directly to vacuum. So now we're just gonna open this. And then I'm gonna cut off the waste gas. Preferably not when there's so much of it being pumped. But I guess it'll just have to happen. Uh, let's see. Disconnect. Wait for this to reach proper vacuum. Which is actually happening fairly quickly. Now it's slowing down. It's still quite fast. Twenty milligrams. Ten milligrams. Six milligrams. Three milligrams. One milligram. What a tease. 500 micrograms. Quarter. A tenth. Would you hurry up and reach zero, please? 30 micrograms. 20. 15. 10. 7. Ray. And vacuum. Okay, now close this. And once it's closed, we'll let the gas through and see if that makes... I, d I think it'll be hard to see whether it's making any difference. But it should mean that the temperature conductivity from here to here is not as high. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing vacuum appear here every other tick. 
drop a bit of water there? Water? Why would I put water there? Oh, we've got our Atmo suit. That's good. That didn't take long. And then... I guess the... I was going to say, I guess the ladders are going to scold people, but we don't actually have to worry about that. Water helps with heat transfer in vacuum. Yeah, I want to prevent heat transfer. That's why I'm aggressively pumping the gas out to where there is nothing but space exposure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm trying to stop the heat from here coming down here as fast. Okay. Now what? Richard down here is still very, very nice. Oh yeah, did we finish our loops? I think we did. And that means now we can cool this way more aggressively without worrying about making the rest of the base too cold. So, minimum temperature for brine is negative 22 degrees, I believe. Negative 22.5. We'll add a couple of degrees just to be safe. Uh, so... Uh, 22 minus 14, 8, 6, 5, let's call it... Oh, we are doing that. Negative 5 degrees. That's our target for this part of the loop. So, negative 5 minus 14, negative 19 degrees. Uh, even with a little bit of variation between sections of pipe in temperature that should be more than safe enough to avoid dropping this to freezing and I think I think we want to make this room nice and cold like below zero cold. We do have an airflow tile up here, but I'm not too worried about that. Nineteen point four nineteen Uh temperature's fluctuating a little. We probably don't need this liquid shutoff anymore, either. Yeah, no, we absolutely do not need that liquid shutoff. I'll just connect it like this. Did that mark the not gate for decon? It did. Fantastic. We're never adding or taking fluid from this loop anymore, so we can just leave that as is. Actually, what's going on here? Oh no. Oh no, I didn't remove that bridge. Oh, oh. Oh. Turns out we are adding to that loop, but why isn't this outputting?
Probably because I haven't deconstructed the liquid shutoff yet. Because they can't reach it. Even though I added pipe here? Question mark? Okay. And this bridge... Gotta go. Like, now, actually. Please don't go to bed. Just... Just decon... Wait, which bridge are we deconning? Oh, it's so hard to tell. Please do not go to bed. Damn it. Don't go back to sleep. Why did you wake up anyway? Slime lung, low oxygen. The whole room is surrounded by oxygen, but apparently just the o just the CO2 from sleep is a bit of a problem. Okay, once that exit is gone, the fluid should move, or not. Can we hurry up and get this deconstructed, please? if our coolant loop is working. Well, I can be a bit pecky. Uh, I don't think they can reach it. Even though... Uh-oh. So they were able to build this, but they can't deconstruct it, apparently. Even though we built wire here before, that doesn't make sense. I guess I could deconstruct the rock crusher so we can build a freaking ladder here. Why are you... Okay. Trouble is they have to go up the chute Oh no, that's not a trouble at all. Finally. Alright, is the liquid going to move now? Yes, it is. We did it. And now I lost the settings for the rock crusher. No! Refinement, rock crusher. It's probably not that bad. Make it out of gold amalgam. You had two ladders last time? Oh, okay. Makes sense. Actually, before I decon that, let's get rid of that wire that's a little bit unsafe looking. Alright, so we have our private loop. And it moves at full speed. Fantastic. How's our temperature looking in here? The rock crusher is by far the hottest thing in the room because we just made it out of material that was from outside of the room. Let's see. Ceramic to sand? I don't think so. Copper ore to copper? No. Eggshell to lime? Always. Fossil to lime? Probably always. I don't think there's another use for fossil, is there? As far as we're concerned. Granite to sand. Salt. Salt to table salt. Sure. 
We can always get more salt if there turns out to be another use for it. Uh, rust deoxidization. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Okay. Nice. So we should be able to make metal uh, much more often now. Maybe it's a bit hopeful to try and get this below zero. What temperature are we at? 16 degrees? 14 degrees? We do have a pneumatic door, which is going to make it a bit harder to pull this room that much. We'll just see how cold it gets and set uh, set the target a bit above that. Maybe I could make it so that there's a bit of slack whereby we aim to get it as cold as possible, but... Well, you know, if we're not getting it as cold as we're trying to, it means we're cooling the area around it. It's not a bad thing. But I was going to say set it so that we can run the metal refinery a little bit a, a couple of degrees or so higher than the minimum temperature that we're aiming for something is overheated chat is worried something is always overheated Building is happening up here. What did I build this out of? Lead, because it probably doesn't matter for this one. Very, very nice. Mafic rock. It surely doesn't matter? Uh oh. Smiley face. That is a small amount of natural gas coming in. I guess the guys are just started up again. Beautiful. There it is. There what is? Food has decayed, damage overheat. Oh no. Yeah, it's coming out this way as well. I don't think we're going to make it to steam temperatures in here before this breaks. Uh, so why don't we move it a little bit? Down here. Snippy snip. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Automation wire is going to have to move. And that should just about do it. I guess we don't need all of that wire. Wait, what am I cancelling? Just do this. I guess I could put some insulated tiles here in the meantime. Let's ignore it. Let's not ignore it. You would think damage overheat would be a higher priority looking thing, 
than just white text on see-through background. Actually, something I do want to try once this flashes to steam. We'll build insulated tiles here. Because of the way these doors work, we'll get away with it. The steam will get pushed in here. And then we'll try building the vacuum airlock. No, that's going to spit steam out unless I have a filter... What a pain. If I had just built this one tile taller, we could have had Atmo suits to get in and out for maintenance. I think that's a much better idea than trying to build it so that we never have to get in and out for maintenance. Easy to lose a lot of metal to repairs, yeah. No research focus. How about... Notification systems? Actually, that would probably be very useful. Strikes the building to the left when it receives a green signal makes a sound. Automated notifier. Certain conditions met. Okay. You still have the space on the left for Atmo suits? I guess I do. Yeah. Who am I kidding? I'm never going to use this area for anything else in particular. That's a good point. Um, I might... How am I going to fit it? So if I just have them here... Let's find our Atmo suit checkpoint. Uh, is it going to be okay if it's lead? Probably not. No, definitely not. Seventy-seven, seventy-five. It's like the same temperature. It is also a valid strat to have your dupes twenty-four-seven in an Atmo suit. Will they sleep in an Atmo suit? That's kind of crazy. But wait, what happens when the Atmo suit runs out of gas? Where are we going? Oh. Oh. This gas pump is taking damage from heat. Uh, Alright, we should build it out of what exactly? Gold? Should be fine. And then... Gas pump. Gold amalgam. Should be okay. Oh no, he found it? How dare you. Okay. This one never took damage like that. I guess it's just slightly further away from the natural gas geyser. Has it been slowly cooking, though? What's it built out of? Gold amalgam. That should be fine, at least for a long time. We could extend our cooling loop all the way up there. 
not the worst idea. We need more brine. Next activity, 46 cycles. Uh-oh. I think I stole too much brine uh, for this liquid reservoir. We really didn't need that much. But in my defense, the metal refinery looked so thirsty. Maybe it's because it's near the cold biome that it's not as bad here. It is in insulated tiles, though. Not exactly clear on how it's impossible to build an airlock with proper insulation. Ooh, what did we research? Uh, hammer? Oh, it's so, it's so small. One by one. Hammer strikes the building to the left when it receives a green signal. Each building has a unique sound when struck by the hammer. How is 60 watts? Serious? Effects auto inputs resonating buildings. Okay. Uh, automated notifier. This doesn't need any power? And it's also one by one? How, why would I ever use the hammer? Attached to sensors, send a notification. And conditions are met. So, for example... Let me know when this room reaches our target temperature. Oh, it's actually down to one degree. 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Over here it's negative 2.3. Make different sound depending on building. Are you supposed to play music with it? Apparently. But why? So it sounds like the automated notifier can be configured quite a lot, like the thing in Factorio. Name, notification, tooltip. It's called tooltip. Brr. We can choose from three different sounds. Pause and zoom. Let me know when it's cold. And... Actually, we need it to be a red signal. So... We've already got our not gate. Let's just snippy snip that. Oh, it is cold already. It's cold. Pause. Zoom. I like this a lot. I used one with a knot gate to pause and tell me when there is a gap in my cooling loop. I had a pipe next to it and just linked and sniped until my cooling loop was perfectly full. Nice. Oh, snipped. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, why on earth would I ever use the hammer instead? If it costs 60 watts. It, that feels like an oversight to me. Oh, it got warmer again. Was it just because the dupes came in? Or did we make... We probably made more steel, that's why. Hammer is just a musical block. I see. It's cold, again. This is going to give us a, a nice intuition as to how often... 
how quickly this cools down. And there it is again. Even though we just... Well, we only did like one work errand with a rock crusher, I think. Ooh, we got our scanner. Very, very nice. Um, I'll actually just snippy that until the whole thing's done. And we'll want some wire up here as well. Oh, it pretty much is finished. Very cool. So we should be able to start digging this away. I, I want to just see the bunker door working first, though. How hot is it here? 45 degrees. It's actually not that bad. But yeah, wait, I know we... Oh, it is working. Wait, what? It doesn't have any power. What? 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 No power wire connected. Is it... Is, is it supposed to work slowly? With no power? It looks very cool though. I could see it working slowly to close with no power, like if you somehow set it up so that you had a bunch of mechanical energy stored and it took power to keep it open so that if something bad happened it would close. Or if not it took power to... what is that? Some kind of planet. I can't see much of it because it's cold again. We've only got 10 more steel left on the 50 that we queued up earlier. You could store mechanical energy for both directions. Hmm. I don't know how that would work. I'm not saying it's not doable. I definitely don't have the engineering education. Uh, but yeah, this cooling loop seems to be working really, really well. I am a fan. Speaking of cooling loops... We could probably extend... Whoa! Okay. Alright, I think we get the idea. Can I not? It, it has to make a sound. Alright then. Whenever we hear that little pop, we know. That does get annoying, yeah. You would think you could turn off the sound though. I guess we can always snip to just disconnect it. At will. Speaking of snipping, fantastic. All right, so I was considering putting an atmosuit dock here, but it's going to get cooked. So instead... I think we just actually have to build, like, a proper vanilla airlock. So that... Why can't I decon this? Because... Tool filter. I think we have to build a proper full vanilla airlock that is going to... Send steam back in here and everything else out here so that we have vacuum. Uh, so that... So 
so that we don't have gas conducting heat from airlock door to airlock door. Build it out of steel? Plus 200 degrees. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Probably nice to plan for the 200 degree steam. Yeah. 75, 275 degrees. Wow, that is luxurious, actually. It's only 100. We only need one Atmosuit dock, so that's 200 in total. That's not that bad. And we can save a whole lot of trouble this way. However... We, we do still need the vanilla airlock so that vacuum... Okay, question. Uh, this is something I definitely want spoiled. Uh, if I put the smallest possible vanilla airlock like this, use a, uh, a mini gas pump, have the filter on the outside, send the steam back in, um, that does escape into this room. I guess I'm not going to be able to have a sensor in here, am I? Might have to be bigger. Because I want to make sure we detect vacuum before the doors can be opened. Um, but my question was going to be... Will heat conduct from this to this to this? Or... Would it be as good as a vacuum with nothing in there? There'll be over 100 kilos of steam pressure. No pump would be able to handle it. Huh. No pump would be able to handle the steam pressure for the input. It doesn't say anything about that. Through the insulation blocks, ceramic recommended. Oh, we can make insulation blocks out of ceramic? That makes sense. We've only got a thousand. Ceramic is magical. We can't make doors out of ceramic, right? No. Of course not. Heat almost does not get conducted through solid objects. Wait, what? Oh, with ceramic? Look at the stats for ceramic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ceramic. Overheat temperature plus 200. Insulator. Uh, more to the point. Specific heat capacity, 0.8. That doesn't sound like a whole lot. Thermal conductivity, 0 0.62. 0 0.62 compared to... What else? What what do we usually make insulated tiles out of? Igneous rock or something? Granite? Let's look at granite. Uh, thermal conductivity, 3.390. Ceramic, 0 0.6. Wow, it's like five times less conductive. Than what we're using. That's pretty good. Although, the problem isn't the insulated tiles. It's very much the doors. Igneous? Igneous is uh, igneous rock. Thermal conductivity two. Well, good thing we're not using that. 
Oh, wait. No, that's better, isn't it? Thermal conductivity... Yeah, it's like significantly less conductive than what we've been using. Whoops. So the answer is yes for vacuum idea and no in general because steam will get out so so quick in dozens of kilograms your pumps would be useless. So you're telling me the dupe would be sitting in the airlock for an extended period of time waiting for the pump to empty. Well, isn't it only... Uh, I was going to say, isn't it only two blocks or four blocks that we're emptying, but then I remembered how much can be in a block gas-wise. If you want proper airlock there, you, sh you would need liquid lock with crude oil. Uh, but that's going to conduct heat. We're looking for the opposite of conducting heat. Otherwise, the vanilla air, uh, otherwise the modded airlock would be all we need. There's no limit for how much can be in a blob. Yikes. You can drop a drop of water there. That will leave a vacuum behind. The water drop. Oh, that's so cheesy. I know it's right. I've seen... We've got a really good example by accident over here. Uh, it actually generated a vacuum, even. Just... Gas cannot share the same tile as fluid. Crude oil vacuum? What? No heat transfer in the vacuum. But the rocks around the vacuum still conduct heat. Yes, of course. And the water, the fluid. Uh, the liquid, I should say, because gas is a fluid. Hmm. The more I think about it, the more inclined I am to say, no, we actually should build this completely sealed in insulation and never go in there again, we hope. That setup with the droplet helps with certain setups and keeping equipment cold. With the droplets. How do you get a droplet on the ceiling, though? Or I guess that's why water locks are shaped with stairs. But there's not really room for that here. Plus it looks redonkulous. With modded door, you could do kind of cheap vacuum lock. How's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With two of them? Uh... <laughs> it's pretty funny that we sort of need two of these modded airlock doors to get an airlock with a vacuum in between. But that would actually be the most elegant solution. I had my shame by telling myself it's quality of life mods. Normal door enough on gas side. Normal door. Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, it would be a normal door plus a pump to remove the gas. Guess we could do that. Mm. So we'd need to move these. So like... Manual airlock. Uh, doesn't really matter what it's made of, I think. We've got so much more gold amalgam, and we don't use it for that much. Iron is kind of more important. 
and a mini pump. And gas vent, high pressure. And then I guess I'm going to put the gas somewhere else because... Why can't I? Oh, right. Because I want the spacesuit dock here. It shouldn't need to be made out of steel this time. If there's going to be this vacuum. But the area is already hot. And it's going to be hot while it's building. And while we're emptying it. I can probably stay. They can climb up through here, I think. We got door space? Door space. Oh, tree. Uh, let's see. Airlock door. Let's do it like that. Stations. At most suit dock made of uh made of steel checkpoint made of steel that mini pump has very low throughput that's fine we're not going to be going in and out of here often uh what i'm more concerned about is how we're going to squeeze through here and i think the answer is just We don't actually have to have tiles above the cool salt slush geyser. And no, I don't want you guys jumping into the slush every time. What's the throughput? Just uh, a dupe being able to come in here for maintenance. Why did you go through there, Matrim? That's like the worst place you could have gone. I hate dupes? Oh no. I mean on the mini pump. Oh, the throughput. Uh, it's like less than half of a regular pump. Gas pump, 500 grams a second. Mini is a tenth of that. Yeah, it's terrible, but we only need to make it vacuum uh, once slash not very often. It's also terrible in terms of our efficiency. It's not bad for this purpose, yeah. No, it's perfect. It's the best for this purpose. We just want two tiles of vacuum here, that's all. Um, and we're not going through here often. We actually want to get rid of that. So, I'm guessing, since we've got, like, max pressure water here, if I try to build insulated tiles here right now, something weird's gonna happen. Like, maybe the water gets spilled out this way. Um, so we're gonna wait till it flashes to steam. It's actually getting close. 96.8 degrees, 97.8. It'll compress? It'll comp compress liquid. That would be a, f a trick. That goes suit iron. Let's go. Am I misremembering? Or are liquids the one thing that are practically but not literally uh, incompressible? Oh, it's already vacuum here. Yeah, I think this is more than sufficient for our purposes. That should really help keep the heat in. 
And once we have the opportunity on this side, we'll put insulated tiles. You're not blind? Wait, what? Or am I wrong? It'll compress. Well, I wouldn't dis I, I wouldn't disbelieve that it'll compress in the game. Um I was just trying to remember if in the real world, uh compressing liquids, as far as we're concerned, is practically impossible. Water doesn't compress. In the game it does. Yeah, okay. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna just save scum, and I wanna see. It's probably gonna be hard to even notice, with two tiles spread over... Uh, 42. But it should probably push most of these just above a thousand, right? The ones at the bottom are actually a thousand and eight, and these ones are less than that. Okay, let's try. And... Was it igneous rock that's better? Slow heating. Granite. 3.3. Igneous rock. Thermal conductivity. That's a lot better. Actually, as long as we're bothering with materials, um, this is the place where we should be using ceramic. We've only made a little bit of it so far, but clay, clay and coal. Let's make some more. Uh, I was trying to do a hundred. Let's do that. Now then. Ceramic insulated tile. And go. Let's not dive into advanced techniques for this blind playthrough. That is a point. Infinite water storage? Oh my goodness. Are you going to heal? Yes, you are. Okay, good. And it did indeed squish the liquid. Which means we can get rid of this very hot airlock. We can put our plastic ladders back down here. Uh, we could eventually extend this out a bit if we want to, but it's probably fine. No gas intake. That is a little bit of a problem. Gas bridge. Uh, catch 22. Oh, there's there's oxygen right here. Let's just do that. I was going to say, if I run the gas this way, we're going to need someone to go in there unless I build ladders, which I don't have room for, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we can just take it from here. There's no oxygen getting that far, though. I can't believe the entire base is full of oxygen, and yet we haven't seen the oxygen reaching these gas vents or filling up this container at all. It seems like we've got a very precarious balance that we're producing enough, and or it is just an enormous volume um, of oxygen that we'd need to saturate everything. Also, I guess we're not getting CO2 from here anymore. Wow, that's... That's a lot of polluted oxygen down there. I never expected to look this far down and see oxygen, uh, polluted oxygen. Why is it below... I don't understand why polluted oxygen is 
heavier and or lighter than oxygen. It's very strange. This is not strange. This is cool. The fact that our bunker door is working. But... I think it's under a false assumption that this thing is powered. Well, I didn't expect the bunker door to work if it wasn't powered. Is the thing. That's pressure? Uh, let's see. Do I have a way to check if we've got power? I'm pretty sure I do. Power shutoff is not what I want. I want the opposite of that. Automation? Wattage sensor. Sends a green or red signal when wattage consumed enters the chosen range. We can just make that anything greater than zero. Uh, put it down here, I guess. Unless I want to run the wire further. That's fine. Lead is cheap. Wait, wait, wait. That's not right. So it'll be green when we have power. And we want an AND gate. And not. I feel like there should be a way for me to save a gate here. Um... Let's see. This output's green when there are meteor showers. If it's green, does it close or open? Green signal open. Yeah, we definitely want the opposite of that. Oh, we could just check for zero wattage, probably. I imagine. So if zero wattage, green. If meteor showers detected, green. And it's all just going into a nut gate. Assuming that we can set the uh, uh, the wattage sensor that way. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Wattage reading below one watt green signal. No, wait. Above zero watts green signal, right? That's not quite right because this isn't connected yet, but it probably works now. So, greater than zero watts, yes. But, well, yeah, if there's no power, there's no power. It doesn't matter which of these is consuming, but it'll be none of them, right? It's not going to give a green signal if there's no... Well, we can check. Power be gone. Current load zero watts. Okay. And that's outputting red. Now it's outputting green. Which... Wait, 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 wait. If there's zero power, we want this output in green. Green means bad. Green means close. Uh, this, on this side, green, that is. Okay. So if... Blue one what? Output green. Therefore, if I disconnect this... 
goes green. If I reconnect it, it goes red. And if they're both red, we can open the bunker door. If there's power detected and if there's no meteor showers detected. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Scan quality, 0%. Presumably scan network quality means you've got an incentive to build more space scanners. And I'm guessing scan quality is we have to expose it to space. I wish someone would hurry up and finish that automation wire. I guess it's not happening until tomorrow. Okay. That's looking a lot better. We're not letting the heat out. We've got vacuum here. Fantastic. And since we have the Atmo suit with no oxygen, actually. Mm. Uh, I think I can just do it like this. It should be fine. Snip that. Okay. One day I am going to make a neat and complete Oni base. It's a thing that could happen. I didn't realize I snipped the gas pipe there. Okay. Once we've got that automation wire finished, uh, I think it'll be safe to start digging away at the regolith. Although I could see the dupes getting themselves trapped. Uh, you know what? Let's put a bunker tile here. And a ladder here. And I guess while we're at it, I could put an airlock door. It doesn't have to be an airlock. I'm just going to put a pneumatic door here, and the purpose of it is simply... To... Come to think of it, I haven't tried this. Can we do it with a door, or do we need, like, a duplicate checkpoint? It allows duplicates to pass when receiving a green signal, prevents when receiving a red signal. Can I set it to be... Can be connected to automated sensors, blah, blah, blah. This is about to get fun. Indeed. Uh, I want to set it so that they can go both ways through a doorway until we receive a red signal here and then they're only allowed to go one way. But I don't know if that's possible. We could always make something symmetrical so that they're always allowed to exit but they're only allowed to go up here if green signal. Or can they climb up through the bunker door? One door entry, one door exit. Indeed. Uh, if they can climb up through here, then that should sort itself out, right? If this door is one way. Exit door is blocked when meteors are about to hit. 
that sound like over engineering? Does it? I would like to find out, as long as we're here, what kind of options I have. Let's just open or close. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to change this stuff with automation wire. If the door is open, they will climb through it as if it's a two-block climb. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. So it's the same as if we have, like, a horizontal manual airlock, right? Yeah, okay. How... High thermal conductivity. Okay, yeah, no. I think I thought of that before. Bunker doors are not the surprisingly easy answer to insulation. Um, so I guess that's not going to work, actually. And auto right side only. And we'll start digging this up. And down comes the regolith. The digging is surprisingly fast, that's nice. Kind of reminds me of Minecraft when you put... Uh-oh. Oh, that's bad timing. <laughs> Why are you stuck? What... what are you... You got to be kidding me. Move to here. Are you choking right now? Kevin? Move to here. Are you serious? What? How are you not able to go there? Screen door? Let's just set it to open. Move to here. Don't tell me someone's got an errand. Toggling. Cavern. Okay. Is this a joke? He is able, but he just waits for the bunker door. Seriously? Oh my god. He'll be fine. Why are you just standing there? Oh, because there's no ladder here. Uh, are you gonna dig that? Could, could you please go inside, Kevin? Kevin, please. Why are you like this? Little we in the suit? Oh no. Kevin, seriously? Jesus. Kevin not allowed to use that... Oh my, you've got to be joking. This is not funny. Okay. We are deconstructing that door and starting over, just to be safe. He'll survive through the night, I promise. X to doubt. Um, and just to be super safe, I think I would like to see... Actually, no. It's fine. Probably just regular tiles here would be okay. It's only this one that needs to be built. So now we need jetpacks. Well, we don't strictly need them, but it'd be nice. We're not detecting asteroids. 
Fantastic. Okay. Pneumatic door. Default settings. Probably will just pee in the suit. What does happen if he does that? Alright, so this is right only. And next we want to get rid of all this regolith. Bitter. Cavern, no, don't wait for the... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. It's fine. This is fine. Phew. Does that mean this works properly now? Scan quality 0%. Door is opening. Scan quality a hundred percent? Seventeen percent. And then it immediately closed again. What? What why are you like this? Auto inputs, green signal open, red signal close and lock. It's not a toggle. Power fluctuation? I don't think so. We've got a thousand jewels. I, I saw like what looked like a flicker there, but we've got a thousand jewels of power stored right here. I thought scanners had overheat limits. Disappointment? Why would it have overheat limits? It it doesn't say it has overheat limits. What what's the worst that could happen? Still, I have no idea why it's doing this. Are we detecting meteors the moment we have a better scan quality than 0%? Is that what's happening? Scan network quality 3%, scan quality 17%. I would expect better, considering it's completely exposed to space and the bunker door is directly above it. Let's see. It is giving a green signal. Current load zero. Uh, wait, what? So we definitely have power. And we've got an ever so brief moment of current load zero for some reason even though the scanner is supposed to be drawing 120 watts so then next tick uh this is outputting green next tick this is going to be green and we're going to close the door so i guess all we need to do is Add a filter gate. The green signal has to last an amount of time.
That should work. Nothing's using power, yeah. That's the only way we can check if we have power. Current wattage reading, 120 watts. But doesn't does the space scanner not continuously con uh, consume power? I guess we could put a battery on the side of this. That'll do the job. Worst case. But I want to find out if the filter gate makes the difference or not. Let's set it to something high so that we can see. Alright, so current wattage reading 120. It's not just a flicker. Current wattage reading 0. The space scanner doesn't continuously consume power. And... Five sec uh, 30 seconds are going to pass and then it's going to close the door. Alright then. Uh, let's just... Give it a smart battery. That's how we can make sure we have power. Uh, it'll be a smart battery and a not gate, right? Probably. Uh, we have to worry about it overheating. So, steel? Can go to 275 degrees? We could put it anywhere we want. Probably better to put it over here, though. 47, 50 degrees. You know what? How about gold? We don't have enough gold. That's plus 50 degrees. Iron. Iron is steel, but with fewer steps. Whatever, let's just use steel. Does the scanner only use power when it detects something? Yeah, I think it is something like that. Maybe only when it's making a green signal. So... Let's see. Spot batteries. Output. Red signal when they're sufficiently charged. Green signal when they get low enough. Which means... Green signal bad, therefore close. Yeah, we don't need a not gate. Get rid of the wattage sensor. And any old setting should do for the smart battery. Uh, let's just say... You know what, let's be safe. Close the door if we get below 50%. Red signal when 100% charged. So now we've got continuous scanning. And it should close as soon as we get a meteor shower. So we should be able to dig away this regolith now. And there it is. Our space scanner is looking very excited. I guess we can start... I was going to say I guess we can start building solar panels, but we have to worry about heat. Uh, it's going to... We're going to be receiving heat from... 
like, uh, from what's giving us power, right? It feels like it's not going to be worth the trouble. There's so much more to know about scanners that the game just doesn't tell you, I can imagine. Oh, we might have to set up some auto miners. Immovable object, achievement unlocked. Fantastic. It seems like... I'm getting the impression that a certain amount of regolith... Like, the game is trying to maintain a certain amount, as opposed to just adding regolith whenever meteors land consistently. It's very hot. It's very, very hot. So we need some really aggressive cooling. Uh, which I think... Oh, a lot of CO2 there. And probably some other gas when the meteor landed. Carbon dioxide. Oh, it's all just carbon dioxide. It looks cool, though. Very nice. These wood ladders are strong, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but yeah, I noticed... I think we got some iron and stuff out of... That was probably from digging the mafic rock? This is what you're seeing. Uh, this is the metal media. Regolith will pile up. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a mess. I think we're gonna need some auto diggers. Is it at least going to shut the door? Oh no. Oh, you've got to be kidding. How... What happened? What happened is... The system works, and then we end up with regolith up here. And then the door opens, and regolith falls on the space scanner. And then the space scanner doesn't work. And then the door won't close because it's not receiving a green signal from the space scanner. Saying that there's asteroids coming. Am I just not supposed to have the space scanner be able to, like, have a door above it so that it has better quality? Space problems starting? Yeah, no, I definitely want to try and figure it out. I think you need to build a top layer of blast doors, then equipment, then a screen door, lower level... Yeah, I was starting to think about layers. But, like... I mean... No matter how I go about it, if we're trying to have this thing properly exposed to space, we're gonna have to consistently auto-mine, right? And then we have to store the stuff that gets auto-mined, and eventually that storage fills up. I feel like it's probably better simply to have... The sp uh, probably just have one space scanner that's not under a door like this, even if we're going to have space scanners that are set up like this. 
because it seems to do just fine no matter where I put it uh, to detect whether meteors were coming. And so far that's all we care about. Got to build a massive outside structure. You can just throw it on a side and don't store it. Throw it on a side. Oh, you can, you can void the regolith. You can infinitely store all that regolith in one tile, just by letting it pile up like this. If it's mined out, don't need to store it. That's pretty funny. I guess this is not Factorio. <laughs> A dispenser set to sweep only. But yeah, there's no there's no way around that we have to get ri rid of regolith indefinitely, right? The game maintains a certain thickness of regolith, generally. Um, otherwise, it would just go to the top of the map by now. Need to remove it forever. Shadow Shot Plus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think something can eat it to become food. Uh, the hatches. You can use it as filtration medium, indeed. Build above the highest level there. With screen doors. I'm guessing it's not like if I build above the regolith, the game will say, oh, there's regolith, therefore we're not going to spawn it up here when the meteors hit. I'm, I'm guessing if I put bunker tile here, we're going to end up with extra regolith up here, right? That would be way too hacky anyway. All right, I'm going to have a little think. I need a break anyway. Uh, let's Let's check everyone's still alive. Fantastic. And we'll save. Um, I might queue up a whole lot of steel. How much iron do we have left? What? Wait, 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 what? Iron. We have less than four kilograms of refined iron. 25.7 tons of iron ore. Okay, it's fine. I have maps where I go to the max limit of the map, then start to be deleted. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, so we can make a bunch of steel. Let's make... Let's queue up like 50 for each of these. Just keep making... Uh, we've probably already got enough glass, to be honest. But we'll queue up a bunch of iron and steel. Now that we've got our coolant loop working well. Oh! Okay, I realize it's still going to take some time. Is that what I think it is? We have one tile of steam. I'm actually rather surprised that, like, over here it's 86.7 degrees. Uh, and over here we've got steam. I didn't think... I, I thought I would be able to witness the first bit of flashing to steam, but here we are. I think you have too much water? No, it's, it's good. It bought me lots and lots of time. Uh, while I was still figuring out how, uh, how I was going to do things. 
Steam exists, confirmed. All right, uh, we just saved, didn't we? I'm gonna let this run right here where we can see it. And we're gonna do some words on stream. And I'm gonna take a short break. Don't worry, you'll learn everything is a bless in Oni, okay? All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
from a breath. Uh, we'll do one more and then back to Oni. Yeah, 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 you can't have two new words from the same person in like, what, five, ten seconds? Probably five seconds. Alright, let's continue with Oni, shall we? And I was thinking about... Okay, so if we do solar panels, uh, presumably they are going to be getting very hot in relatively short time. as they are receiving sunbeams. Oh. Oh, rip. Rip screen door. Uh, I think we needed a bit more... Wait, how did this happen? Broken. Why? Did it get hit by an asteroid, or was it something else? Damage from overheating. Oh. Oh, it does have an overheat temperature. Well, there you go. Uh, let's decon that. What else is broken? A ladder. Uh, how did this break? Damage from falling space rocks. Yeah, that's not too surprising. The door can overheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have remembered. Um, I'm not overly concerned about that right now. But yeah, I was thinking... So we need to delete a lot of heat. We actually need steam engines to support solar panels. Because as far as I'm aware... There is nothing uh, in this game that deletes heat like steam engines. I'm not aware of any radiators that you can build, and even if you could, uh, it would be difficult. You'd have to protect them with bunker doors, and protect them from regolith and so on. But if we're going to do steam up here, like say I was going to build a steam system right here, uh, there's the slight issue that it is already over 100 degrees. Which gives, gives us a nice head start on flashing the water to steam. A little too nice, actually. We've still got just one tile of steam here. Uh, because 
if we pipe water up this way, it's actually going to flash to steam before it gets out of the pipes. Potentially. So I was thinking the only sensible way to bring water up here if we're going to make a steam system in this area is with bottle emptiers. Uh, bonus points, they can't overheat. Um, but yeah, I think... I think for the moment we'll just... Put some steel up here. Some bunker tiles. And we can use this place as an infinite regolith mine. There's polluted water on the right. There is indeed. Okay. Is someone going to dig this? They just woke up. That's why they haven't done it yet. And I was thinking about how we're going to end up with infinite resources on one tile. Uh, I'm guessing it's just going to, like, if more iron drops here, then it's just going to change this number, right? So we're not going to end up with, like, an infinite number of entities slowing the game down more and more. Oh, we have to dig this still. In we go. The piles have a max quantity. Oh, okay. I think most games get sluggish starting around 2,000 cycles. Hmm. As in, it's something you can't avoid, or it just, that's a tendency. Maybe we don't really need this screen door. Oh, this got damaged as well. Or did it? Awaiting repair, lead, 2,500 grams. Okay. The game starts to slow down at 500. Indeed. Probably time... Uh, items and whatnot, yeah. Okay. Um, I'd love to get this built sooner rather than later. So this is our infinite supply of copper, gold amalgam, iron, uh, just literally all the metals as far as we're concerned. Filtration medium. Glass tiles above the bunker door to allow the sun to pass through, and you need an automatic digger and cooling system to avoid the overheat. Glass tiles? Above the bunker door, won't they just be destroyed? Is that just something you have to do? The more things you have, more calculation the game needs to do. Yes. Oh, do we not have enough steel? We've got 1400, so the answer is no. We do have enough steel. So really, after all that, our bunker door is basically just going to be forbidding the dupes or not. <laughs> At least for now. Isn't glass tile smashed by meteors? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. F 
overflow tiles or mesh tiles under the bunker doors? Oh, I see what you mean. To let the light through. Mesh and airflow tiles don't reduce the efficiency like glass tiles. That's weird. Wait, he's standing on the bunker door. Even though he can go through it. Bunker doors are awesome, actually. Alright. Let's see how our stu- Ooh! Our steam is steaming. Very, very nice. And the temperature is getting kept in very nicely indeed. All the doors work like that? Really? Well. T-I-L. It is very convenient. Instead of ladders, you can pile doors one on top of another. <laughs> Indeed. I'd kind of like to flatten and explore over here. Let's mark all that for digging. Also, can we not get this repaired? Nice ordering. And we're done. I should probably have a tube exit here. save that little bit of time. I don't know, I'm really enjoying where I'm up to, but I'm also getting to the point of I really want to restart so that I can do things a little better, especially widening the main bus so we've got room for free tile things on either side of it. Not to mention it'll make it easier uh, to have our power and pipes and stuff going both ways. What are we printing? Sandstone. Exciting. Before restart, loan a bit of space? Yeah, definitely. I'm really happy with how the glass system turned out, though. Also, I'm probably not going to... I don't know if I'm going to be as lucky as to have access to a cool slush geyser next to... Why are we making messes? Because there's hardly any... What? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Um... I wasn't expecting that. You know, we've got enough cooling... Maybe I should take water from another infinite source? Why restart? Did I miss something? Uh, I'm not actually going to restart anytime soon. But just the number of things I've learned where I'm like, oh, it would definitely fit better, it fit together better if I did XYZ. Um, the main bus, for example, if I had three tiles. Uh, either side of it before we go to the doors. Uh, we could fit transit tube accesses or uh, large transformers. Um, the stuff I learned about how much heat the water can take before it flashes. So we've actually got tons of time before we need a steam engine and we can sink heat. The things I've learned about coolant loops, which enable me to do a whole lot of other stuff. There's a lot. 
I do want to get a Paku farm going as well. Um, but yeah, we need an infinite water source and we can... Uh, we can take from hot water now, and I could have done that a while ago, to be honest. We've got this one down here, and we've got this one over here. This is so much closer to where we're already doing our water input. So I think we'll use that. I need to get there first, preferably without opening this up. Let's see, this is our actual input area for water. So, how much heat can dusk caps tolerate? 35 degrees, that's not that high. Right here. This is our input water pipe. I think the path is fairly obvious. I'll probably use insulated pipes though. This is going to get hot. Unless... Well, unless nothing. Hmm. How can I take the hot water and not put it here, but only put it down here? By putting a bridge this way. Just to make it one way. And then I'm gonna need another bridge. That's the wrong way around. Or I could do it, I could put it here. That's fine actually. Okay. That's gonna heat this up anyway, just by proxy. Let's get some insulated pipe. That'll help at least, I imagine. And... Let's make this a proper room, like we could have done a million years ago. Bit of ladder. And then we'll do a vertical airlock right about here. Should be fine. Wait, that's still... This is in the way. I could just make the reservoir, like, bigger. But I don't particularly want to... Oh, this is phosphorite and coal. That's not very good at keeping heat in. So yeah, let's actually build a reservoir here. Igneous rock was the better one, right? Mafic rock. Let's see the properties of Mafic Rock. Thermal conductivity 1. Specific heat capacity is kind of low. We've already got 42,000 of it. Wow. Um, what was the other good one? Ig Igneous? Okay, point 0.2 and 1 versus 1 and 2. 
So the conductivity is way lower, but so is the specific heat capacity. I think we'll probably go for the Mavic Rock. If we're going to use something cheap, that is. Let's double check. So where do I want to put this? Uh, there's going to be steam. We need to not let that out. Let's just plan out where our rooms would intersect normally. Something like this. That's maybe a little bit overkill. But... That's at least gonna be... Where I'd like that to go. That's no good. Actually, it should be fine. Manual airlock. Does it even need to be an airlock? I don't think so. As long as we have an S bend. The water's not gonna escape. Right? And as long as, as long as we don't let the water go below this level, the steam isn't going to get out. Mavic is one of the best insulation materials, indeed. Does the oxygen generation stop? Oh, uh, did it stop a while ago? Um, yes. Yes, it did. We've still got a lot of it, though. So, should I just position the pump? I'm going to use automation to make it a bit more power efficient regardless. But that said, I don't think I do want to take water from below where it's going to let the gas out. here. Just breathe, deep breathe and relax. Uh-oh. Uh, insulated pipe. Power. Where are we getting our power? This should be fine. This is doing a lot, actually. Current load. Potential load is only 1,710 out of 2,000. Uh, what does the pump do again? 240? Uh, 240. So, we can't afford it, even if everything's working. Ceram ceramic best, I think, and then Mafic. Nice. So Mafic's just ridiculously good for something that you don't have to process yourself. Right then. Let's dig that out. And I won't plan any further than that just yet. Ceramic 0.6, Mavic 1, Igneous 2 for thermal conductivity.
But mafic and ceramic are more late because of different biomes, yeah. Probably think about how I'm going to deal with that polluted water. When you start building heavy machinery, ceramic is best if you can afford it, definitely. It's not that hard to make, but like a lot of things, we have to pay heat for it. But once you can deal with heat, it's not that big of a deal. And we are really dealing with heat here. Very nice. I guess if I made the circuitry a bit more complicated to have some latch behavior so that once we get cold enough we're allowed to increase the temperature by a few more degrees by doing recipes it's probably not going to make that much difference overall uh, to how quickly we produce our industry stuff you can make an insulation tile made of insulation a zero heat transfer. That's weird. Right, so we should be able to just mop up this polluted water. I think. Probably. I do have a deodorizer right here, but I think the polluted oxygen might be able to get past it. How much range does it have? I guess this is a good time to find out. Put a temp sensor and automate a heater if you have the power to spare. Automate a heater. Uh, I find it hard to imagine when I would want to create heat. At least on the default space rock. Made a mess. Oh no, we're still trying to fix this. Oh, there's going to be so many more messes. Oh no. I don't really have anywhere else I can quickly go for water. Where are we putting polluted water? I don't remember. Oh, it's all going over here. Yeah. So we're not processing it at the moment. I could use this as our reservoir for new water, but it's going to be full of germs. Why did you break it in that order? Oh my god. No, 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 no. Bad. Bad. Insulated tile. Max priority. Hurry up, please. That is literally the worst order you could have done that. No, why are you not... You're standing right next to the top priority build. What do you think that means? Okay, we kept the steam out at least. They'll strangle themselves with a cordless phone? I'd believe it. 
That just lets so much heat over here. Not that it's that big of a problem. On the plus side, we're gonna mop up some water and there'll there'll be a little bit of water in the uh Okay. At least it's not scalding hot. Oh, it's even getting over that. I didn't know that was possible. That looks very weird, to be honest. Fifty-four degrees Celsius? Yes, indeed, it does come from a steam geyser. And I didn't... oh, what's that? Wait, what is... why is there a swirl of oxalite? Mixed with a swirl of abyssalite. That seems suspicious. That, that doesn't seem likely to have been generated randomly. Maybe it's a product of natural selection. Now get back to mopping. All because one dupe went to do this in the worst order possible. Mods or DLC? Uh, just some quality of life mods and uh, airlock door, which requires 120 watts. Uh, you can have 12 charges of going through the door and it doesn't let uh, gases through. It also blocks liquids, weirdly enough. Made a mess. That's actually the best place you could have made a mess. Good job, Matrim. Matrim confirmed potty trained. That oxalite looks like a bomb fuse, indeed. Okay. We're not going to have any more water coming through. Fantastic. What would be even more fantastic is if the wire was there. Made a mess. That's not the worst place. That is just delightful. Uh, I guess it's not going to off-gas polluted air on the plus side. I think I would prefer to remove it though, sooner or later. Preferably sooner. Very weird glob of water there. Is it really the end of the day already? Okay. Spend like two seconds on the jukebox. I guess it's because our power is not looking good. Our power is looking good. What the hell? Alright, one last printable and we'll finish for today. 
Hatchling eggs? Sure, let's have some omelets. High stress? Uh-oh. Probably because they're making a mess. Because we ran out of water. And they've been hot while fixing this. That might have something to do with it. Breathability went under 10%. Uh, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Now it's back to 30%. Probably had something to do with where they were standing. I'm guessing it looks at where the dupes actually are, or their frequent walking paths or something. To decide where needs to be breathable. Oh crap. Oh crap. The hydrogen's escaping. <laughs> oh my god. The oxygen is so thin that the hydrogen's got too much pressure and it's getting all over the place. That's suboptimal. 100 grams of O2 is not enough, you don't say. As it turns out, Oh, we've got an accidental water lock. Is this the end of the world? Nah, we'll be fine. It's fine. There's our water coming in. And bringing some heat with it, but we'll be able to deal with that. And it needs to snake through all of these storages first. Because fluid storage is a bit weird in this game. And then we can start sending water to the electrolyzers. Up, up we go. And we kind of need this to saturate before we get a good amount of water in here. Okay, there we go. Little bit of oxygen. Where are we making messes? Oh, I missed it. Oh no. Uh, just, just mop everything. Mop that. Fantastic. That's a lot of steam. At 101 degrees. It's still going to take a long time to get up to temperature. Uh... Does it tell us? I forget where it tells us that we need like 125 or 150 degrees. But as long as we can keep using this as a heat sink, I'm not that fussed to be honest. Alright. There's our electrolyzers. There's our oxygen. We're gonna be okay. Are we happy? No research focus selected. Let's pick the first thing that we haven't got. Mechanical surfboard. Perfect. Just what we always needed. Blind playthrough equals no guides. Yeah, I've never gone to the wiki. I think it's more for try to get less backseating. It depends on what you call backseating. Uh, 
If someone says something like, look at the properties of ceramic, that is beyond welcome. Uh, and some little hints. But to say, before I even try to figure it out, make the aqua tuna out of steel, for example, uh, not, not as good. That's what I have chat for? <laughs> yeah. Alright, it looks like we're gonna survive now. So, we'll save there. And start looking for someone to raid. Uh, my autocomplete Twitch direct, uh, directory game oxygen not included doesn't have the percent two zeros in it and I can't find a way to remove that specifically from like the autocompletes. Discount engineer? I think we'll probably give them a raid again. Cycle 263665 dupes. Wow. I have given discount quite a few raids already. We'll maybe look around a bit more. Spread it out a bit. I'll just check that it's not like low quality or something. They seem to be away. Okay, let's do discount. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out. WestyX, take care. Zimmy, see you next time. Friendly dupes are potty trained again, indeed. You should make the tachyon detector out of unobtainium. Yes. Okay, let's head over and say hello to discount. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Tomorrow and the next day we'll be doing Factorio SE plus K2, Space Exploration. Uh, and as I recall, we are well and truly getting on track making uh, to make a proper base on Hagen. See you, Kevin. Evil Claw, Benwee. Thanks for hanging out. Take care, guys.